the Philippines, an archipelago of over 7,000 islands, known for its beautiful beaches, friendly locals. The people here in the Philippines are just some of the friendliest in the world. And in my opinion, Asia's most underrated food. The food here is full of flavor, fresh, smoky, sweet, exotic. Whoa. There's so much more to Filipino cuisine than just adobo. Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin, and this is a film I made with over 100 hours spent filming across some of the Philippines' most famous food destinations, from the chaotic capital of Manila to the pristine jungles of Palawan, to the laid-back vibe of Cebu and the food heaven, which is the city of Bacolod. Everyone knows that the best way to dive deep into any country's culture or cuisine is with the help of locals. So we're kicking things off in the biggest city in the central Visayas, Cebu. With the help of my local Cebuano friend, Paolo, we're going to uncover the true taste of Cebu. All right, where are we, Paolo? This is pretty hardcore. Yes, this is uh, the downtown area here in Cebu. We're yeah. in, in near Pasil. Mm -hmm. This is Esmin's Carinderia, the very notorious Esmin's Carinderia. And they're serving linarang. linarang. Yeah, which is a Visaya dish, right? Yes, uh, fish stew. Fish that's, stew. That's what you have, uh, nothing but fish, vegetables. The main ingredient is the, the fish, different kinds of fish. Yeah. But the one they have here is porcupine fish. Porcupine fish. Puffer, that's that's, that's, that's like crazy. a puffer fish. They have uh, on display, right? Yeah, they've got the it on display too. there. Uh, that's the fish. That's the Fish, so you're gonna get the taste, Luke. See, they're adding oh, a little yeah. bit more. Adding more ingredients. You got the ingredients, the vegetables, tomatoes, the tomato. It's green onions. Uh, tomato base too. So yep. you get the richness of the flavor from There's the vegetables. Chilies in there. Yes. There's all kinds of different things. I've never had porcupine fish before, let's, so it's gonna be my first time. Let's have it here today. This is just the craziest setup. Cooking on wood you fire get the too. Heat, wood yeah, you fire. get the heat coming. The smoke. So this Garandaria has been around for 60 years. We're waiting for them to finish cooking uh, the final pot. Uh, this is the sixth one that they've cooked today. So it's absolutely bonkers here. Super busy and uh, I'm pumped to try it out. It's supposed to be really good. Wow. So this is the liver? The liver, yeah. the liver of the porcupine fish. That the is fish. quite a unique ingredient. Check that out. The liver. Wow. And then we've got two bowls of the linarang. I guess this one's this with... This is a linarang with the soup. Okay. Just the soup. Just the soup and, and then with most the of the fish. Yeah, and there's the liver. Look at that. All right, man. Let's just try this broth first Please of all. Please yeah. have a taste of yeah. the linarang soup. Oh, wow. Nice and sour. You can taste the fish mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. There's coconut milk in there, and yep. it's definitely got some heat and some spiciness too. It reminds me of sinigang a little yes, bit, right? It does. Because of the mix of the vegetables and yep. all of that, you get that same flavor, but at the same time, the distinctness of the fish. Yeah, the is seafood really, flavor really is, comes out. is really good in there, yeah. So you pair that up with the maiz still, because it's a perfect the corn uh, texture, the yep. corn grits still. Yep. All right, there's quite a few bones in here. Uh, he told me to watch it for the bones, the chef. Did, yep. But, uh, Paolo's an expert, so get, get he's going to help a, me get, get some yourself meat. a bite out of that. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of meat in here, but it, what is and there looks really nice and white. Okay, I got a good piece. And then mix it up with there we go. your corn grits. Yeah, put it on the corn grits. Get as much of the vegetable if you can, too. Yeah, oh yeah. Put a little bit of tomato in there, too. There we go. That's a good bite right yeah. there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's very fresh tasting. Like, it's yeah. not oily at all. That's the, the fact fish that the is, fish market is right by. The, yeah, the so fish market is nearby. Yeah. This is such a hardcore spot packed out with locals. It doesn't get more local than this. I love the flavor of that broth. Nice you get and the sour. flavor in just one good bowl of everything. Um, it's such a very Cebuano flavor. Linarang. Yeah. Wow, what an atmosphere, man. Right? This is intense. That was some, some good linarang, huh? Right. Uh, yeah. That's what you can expect when it comes to uh, the downtown side of Cebu. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. we're at. I love the feeling, the intensity. So you, you really feel how busy it can get yeah, during yeah. lunchtime. So uh, head out to our next spot. Yeah, I heard the best way to get around town is in the jeepney. Of course. All that's right. a, it's very Filipino. So let's try to get to a jeepney stop in the right way. <laughs> good luck. Yeah? And good luck to us. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, go. Let's go ride the jeep. We can wait right by the no stopping. 
Right by the no stopping sign? All right. <laughs> so how does this work exactly? How do I know what jeepney I want to take? So we'll, we'll, we'll pick a particular one that's going to head our way, and then let's pale one the down best. and hope for the best. <laughs> okay. Tilted. It's tilted on one way. Yeah, it's like this. <laughs> These are the newer ones. You're right. Yeah, I love the paint. The paint <laughs> is amazing. I like the paint job on this one yeah. too. Okay, let's do it. Go, bro. All right, where do we go? Let's hit. All right, we made it in the jeepney. This morning we saw the Spanish influence here in the Philippines with the Pochero, over 300 years colonization, but also there's a lot of American influence. These jeepneys, a lot of them were left behind from World War II. There was a surplus. They've been kind of uh, modified and Frankenstein together. And then with a beautiful paint job, and uh, this is the iconic symbol now of the Philippines, public transportation at least. Okay, so you hail a jeepney, yep. it stops pretty much everywhere, okay. anywhere, a jeepney stops. Yeah. And then you just get on and get off. And how do you let them know if you want to get off? Either you, you knock. Knock on the, the roof. All right, no so that means, yeah. that means we're here. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Check it out. <laughs> <Check it out. laughs> Whoa! <laughs> We've got a massive pot of the, this is the pochero here, That's yeah? the pochero right there. Yeah. So that's uh, nothing but beef being brewed over and stewing yeah, for yeah, how yeah. many hours? Cooking like, on wood fire too. Mm -hmm. I see some pieces of corn floating in there and she's using a little bit of the broth to kind of stoke the fire and uh, get those flames going up. She get out there. Do you see how that oh, yeah. effect goes? Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. That adds, <laughs> the, the beautiful adds to touch. the flavor. Yeah, sure. All right. This place is uh, mostly known for its pochero, mm -hmm. which is the, the beef stew basically. But at the same time, it's a locally known carinderia. It's a go-to restaurant place for the community. So most of these places um, are known for one particular uh, food, but they also have yeah. a lot of different options. Okay. All right, Paolo, we've got our pochero here. It's like a beef stew. The yes. origins come from Spain, but it's very Filipino. Very Filipino, yeah. very Bisaya, particularly for the pochero. Every region of uh, the Philippines, they have their own version of pochero, or bulalo for some even. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, most of the main ingredients are kind of the same. You yeah, have your yeah. beef, and you have all your different vegetables that you can find. It's, it's really um, how Cebu used to be such a historical point. Uh, for many different cultures and many different culinary ingredients from, from other people. Okay. So we try to mix it and match it and make it our own. So there's bone, there's cartilage, there's tons of beef. And it's still pretty clear broth. Though. Yes. It's not like a super thick broth or anything. It's you see how, how tender it is? Look at that meat. Add in the soup too. Okay. Have, it, yeah. have it like really Get it soupy saturated. Your, yeah. yeah. Cheers, man. Welcome to Cebu. Oh, mm. Nice. Mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. Super tender. So tender. The corn grits it. is like a really unique texture. It's, exactly. it's really like a, a tiny piece of rice is what it feels yeah. like. And the broth is quite salty actually, but really beefy. So really you, can, you can try it, uh, put in a little bit of the, the beef with a little bit of the ginamos of your shrimp. Okay, let's try it, let's try it. Grab some of the ginamos. Okay, Put shrimp it on, paste. right? All right, put it on the your, color of that shrimp right? paste is unique. It's it's pretty special for here too. And then you get that, that, that bite of saltiness and beefiness in one bite. Sure. Go. Mm. That's mm. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Soup's perfect too. That's man. phenomenal. That's perfect breakfast. Right? It feels light, healthy. That beef is just so tender. That's what this place is known for too. So. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's good. Yeah. Have, have some more, man. <laughs> so we've also got some corn in here. And I'm following by example. Yep. You went yep. right in with the fingers. I, that's like probably one of the first things I, 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 I really love them. about the, the bocero, the yeah. corn. Each bite has a flavor of the whole bowl. Yeah. It's like a sweet, sweet corn, yeah. All right, right. Mm -hmm. We've also got 
looks like some calamansi here. And yeah, so that's chili. Uh, that's some lime and, and you got some calamansi and chili. Okay. Um, chili. And if you want to mix that with your guinamos. Oh man, this is just comfort food. Serious comfort food. We saw the Spanish influence this morning, the American influence in the jeepney. The other major one is going to be the Chinese, right? We've come to this place, Chinese... Ngoyong. Ngoyong? Ngoyong. 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 Okay. It's hard to pronounce the H somewhere there, but there's an H there somewhere. There is an H, okay. This is a Cebuano take on a, a Chinese recipe that eventually, throughout time, it became a very Cebuano uh, okay. uh, dish. So right? it's like a fried spring roll, It's like a spring roll, but a instead of... It's like a lumpia yeah, yeah. for Filipinos, but instead of having meat inside, there's ubud or bamboo sprout sometimes. Bamboo, okay. But it, it's not, now the, the most common recipe is vegetables inside. That's ubud. Okay, this right? place is super popular. I know that. Yes, this Let's is a spot it. to go if you if you eat it here in Cebu. And you can only find moyong here in Cebu. Really? Yes. All right, well then That's we have right. to try it. Let's go. Let's go. So it's kind of self-service. You just take this and uh, write how many you want for... Uh, no idea how to spell this. Nong yong. How, no do, yong. how do you spell that? N. No. <laughs> yong. N. No yong. Yeah, you got the H there. Yeah. <laughs> They're absolutely massive. Look at those in there. Wow. And that's why uh, you gotta come to this place because of those, even though they have other things, but the no yong. You gotta try it. Alright. That is heavy. There's only four in there. Holy smokes. All right, man, we've got our nyong nyong. Oh, no, almost no, yong. Almost, almost. almost. That's closer, it. right? Yeah, yeah. So it's served with this uh, spicy, sweet-looking sauce. You can see the chilies there, yeah, too. Yeah, I can so see some chilies really floating spicy. in there. And then what do we got here in this little wrapped up? This is uh, what we call busuk. This is uh, okay. hanging rice. Okay, yeah, I can see so the it's, rice it's in really, there. Uh, it's basically rice that's really packed in. Grab one of the pieces over there if Okay, you oh, it's super ah, dense. Super yeah. dense, yeah. And then get grab one of your moyongs, take right. a bite. Go for a dip. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that sauce. It's definitely got some heat to it. It's got a little bit of sourness too. And then the rice really nice. balances it out yeah. too. Because it's a little bit oily. Wow, that's a serious uh, spring roll. Mm -hmm. oh. That is like the perfect after drinking snack I could eat. More than one of these. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yum. I love it. Nice. The sauce really makes it for me. It's got all the flavor. And honestly, it reminds me of like American Chinese food or Canadian Chinese food. Mm -hmm. Greasy and good. Yum. My fingers are super greasy. That's a good meal? <laughs> yeah, good meal. Let's eat some more greasy stuff. Oh yeah, there's lots to eat here. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Alright man, what do we got here? We're Ooh. at this place called Punko Punko Safuente. Yeah. And yes. what does Punko Punko mean? Punko Punko is literally sit sit. Sit sit? Okay, well we're, we're doing down. it. Okay, so we just ordered up something here. What do we got here, Paula? This is the Ginabot. Ginabot. So Which is uh, pig intestine. Pig intestine, pig mesentery. It's a yes. special cut of the intestine. We also you also call it sweet flour, right? Sweet flour. Yeah, so it's been deep fried, Ooh. super crunchy, crispy looking. How, how do we eat this? I'm guessing we're in the Philippines, I'm guessing it's with vinegar. It's with vinegar. <laughs> you add in a little bit of onions, a yeah. little bit of chili, some salt in there. That sounds you good. Dip in the uh, ginabot into your mouth. Straight with another <laughs> piece of puso, which is the rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a perfect bite. Alright, let's dig in. All right, thank you. So he's given us this bag, which is, I guess, used as a glove. Yes. Yeah, it so doubles as a glove. That's fine. To keep your hands clean yep. while you're eating. And we also got the vinegar here with some chilies, some onions, which is looking really good. Mm -hmm. Chili spicy. Chili spicy. Be careful. It spicy. I'm coming from Thailand, man. I'm okay. Well, then again, you know, you got practice. See? How does that? 
this, is it like an explosion in your mouth? It's so funky. Yeah. It's pretty much just like fried nothing. It's just like a really crunchy, it's all the flavors coming from those onions, yes. that vinegar. Yes. And I can hear the guys behind us, every time a new customer comes in, they start going crazy. So are they, is this one job or are they working together or no? There used to be different places for Ginabutans or, or Pungo Pungo, mm. but now this particular spot got famous because they banded together, but they all come from different suppliers. They're different kitchens yeah, yeah. who cook and yeah. then put so their food in. So they're competing with each other. They're competing with each other. with each other. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So, I mean, they all look like they've got good Pungo Pungo. That's why when people come in, they shout, Tsuke, Ke, Ke, Ke. Come so here, give you, me your money. If you ask for more food, you say, Ke, Puno, Pagugamay. All right. Wow, I love it. I love the culture here. I love the, the food culture here in the Philippines. It's really unique, really crunchy. We're getting ready to eat some more. Oh man, good, that right? is good. I need a beer. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> some of the pieces a little bit like chewier on the inside and then some mm -hmm. are just really, really crispy. And uh, Paulo was just telling me they make their own vinegar here. It goes so well with the onions too. Can we ask him how do they? What's the best way to convince the customer to come to their stall? I think it's working. He's saying that, saying that the kinabo here is crunchy, crunchy, extra crunchy here. Oh, I think it's gonna work. I think we might be scaring away the customers with our camera. I can feel my Good. cholesterol levels yeah. going up. <laughs> it's, it's getting there. As soon as we left, the table's already taken. Where, where are you taking me now? now we got more food. We got more food. We're going to check out uh, some of the spots that you can find within the area. Okay. And then we're going to look for more food. All right, all right. Let's Keep go. it a secret. Let's go. Before I head to the market this morning, I'm here at the Chicharron factory. I'm gonna see how they're making it. It's another one of the most famous products here in Car Car. So let's go see how they make it and try out some Chicharron. This is the Chicho Roan factory here. They've been making it here for over 40 years to sell in the Carcar City market. So it's the pork skin that is uh, boiled, sliced into small pieces, and then fried in this massive vat of oil. It's actually fried twice. And when he dumped it in there, it completely puffs up, gets super crispy. And that's the final product, the Chicho Roan. It's another famous product of the Carcar uh, City and I'm pumped to try it out. Really cool preparation in this really authentic uh, back alley Karkar City factory, Chicharron factory, super cool. So this is the second round of being fried and it doesn't take long. The bubbles start to form on the outside of that pork skin. It really puffs up and it's only in the oil for a few seconds. He's using this massive, almost shovel to uh, scoop and work this around. And uh, wow, what a process. That vat of oil is massive, super hot, cooked on wood fire. Look at that, it's looking really crispy and delicious. And that's uh, pretty much it for the chicharron. Wow. All right, so that's it. You gotta be careful here not to get any oil on you. And that's a ton of chicharron in there. So crispy looking. And it's gonna be cooled off for a few minutes or so and then taken straight down the street to the market to be sold. Wow, that is so cool. What a process. been given the privilege of trying out the fresh chicharron. Check that out. It is like a rice crispy puff is what it looks like. It's super crispy looking. Just came out of the oil. Uh, I'm not sure it's gonna be really hot, but let's try. Oh yeah, very hot. 
<laughs> wow. Ridiculously crunchy on the outside, but on the inside, it's still got a little bit of a, like a chewiness, a little bit of a leanness, and it completely melts in your mouth. It tastes a little bit salty. It's such a crunchy cracker type snack. Wow. Listen to this crunch. <laughs> That's insane. Wow. Oily, but seriously addicting. Yum. So they also make a spicy version of the chicharron. Can I try it? Yes. Yeah? All right. So basically just a red chili powder on top of the cooled off chicharron. Let's try it. <laughs> it's getting even crunchier as it cools off. Mm. That's a nice like, uh, almost like a smoky paprika flavor to it. A little bit of spice. And they're doing this three times a day because there's such a demand for this chicharron. It's so good. Got crunch. Mm. This is the final product here, packaged up, ready to be sold at the market, both original and spicy version. And we're gonna go check out their stall in the market and see what else you can uh, find at the Car Car City market. Let's go. That chicharron was awesome. And like I mentioned, Car Car City is famous for its market. So I'm gonna go hop in this trike here and head to the Car Car City market. Okay, let's go. Carcar City was one of the many places in the Philippines that was devastated by Typhoon Odette, but particularly Carcar City was in the eye of Typhoon Odette. So the old market was actually completely destroyed. We're gonna stop by and just take a look at what's left, but luckily they had already planned on moving it to a newer facility. So that's where the lechon's being sold and served today. But uh, yeah, that typhoon was extremely bad for the Philippines just a few months ago in December and the, the cleanup is still happening and so many people lost so much and it's really just a sad story and you can see it here in Karkar just how devastating it really was. This used to be full of lechon stalls, people selling uh, market activity, a hive of economics here in Karkar city and now it's just twisted metal, destruction, it's really sad to see, but it's also a symbol of how resilient the Filipino people are. There's already a new market. Uh, people are selling their lechon. They don't give up and wow, what a sight to see. It's absolutely destroyed craziness. But we're going to head now to the new market, taste some of that lechon that Karkar is famous for. So this is the new Karkar City Market. I've come straight to the lechon section and you'll see lots of this. The entire roast pig, the final product, glistening, beautiful skin. And the best part about this market is the free samples. Can I try? <laughs> wow, thank you so much. Look at that beautiful oily skin and a little layer of fat on the backside there. That's just absolutely beautiful. And I'm at this little stall called Oka Perez special native lechon. Oh. That is magic. It's so crunchy, but as soon as you bite into it, it releases the oil, saltiness, packed full of flavor, and you've got that really thin layer of fat that just helps it all melt away. That's insanely delicious. And that's just the skin. It's been packed and stuffed full of herbs and spices when it's roasted. So the meat is just as good. We're gonna actually order some up. You can buy it by the kilo and take it back uh, to a local's house to be cooked up and eaten with some other things. Wow, look at that, beautiful. Thank you so much, Salamat, here you go. So we bought one kg, she chopped it all up. There's a little bits of skin in there and she actually used some of the juices that they collect 
from the roasting process. So 600 uh, pesos for one kg. Salamat, thank you so much. Wow, I am pumped to try this out. Let's take a little look around the market, see what else we can find. Here in Cebu, nearly everything is eaten alongside this. This is puso, or hanging rice. So it's compressed rice wrapped in coconut leaves, and she's making it by hand, the uh, wrap. It's almost like origami. It's super intricate, those coconut leaves. And we're gonna take some of those home to have with the lechon, a perfect accompaniment. Just like with every Filipino market, you're gonna find lots of seafood. So this is the seafood section here. They have pretty much everything you need to cook all the Filipino classic dishes. But uh, I gotta tell you, my mind is solely on the lechon today. I was just on my way out of the market and I noticed this stall selling tuba. This is a type of liquor made from coconut and she's poured me a fresh glass right here and you can see that color, that rich orange red color. And look at this, it's fizzing, fermenting in there. I can smell it already. It smells very strong like vinegar. Whew, yeah. Oh, it's actually not very strong, but the flavor is quite pronounced. The alcoholic content feels less than I expected, but it's very vinegary, very carbonated. I can't say I love it. It's got a unique kind of fruity flavor and fermented kind of rotting flavor at the same time. They've just got jugs on jugs of it. And everybody here seems like to day drink a little bit, so I thought I'd join in. Ruben, Luke, what's up, man? Yeah, it's nice to see you. Welcome to our car. Thank you for having me. This is your aunt's house, right? Yeah, auntie's house. Yeah, and we saw her uh, preparing the lechon, or lechon. sorry, the chicharron, chicharron yeah. earlier. Yep. You enjoyed it a lot. Oh yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's time for a real lunch, right? Eating. <laughs> yeah, we are excited for that. Let's go. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Wow, look at this feast. Man, oh man, we've got yeah. a feast here. We're <laughs> finally here. So what do we have? I know the lechon, obviously, we just picked up from the market. Mm -hmm. We bought a kilo and then your aunt had another kilo. Yeah, another kilo, <laughs> two kilograms two now. Kilos. <laughs> we'll do our best. And then of course, the teacher on both the spicy, spicy guy the regular. and original. And then what is this dish here? That's humba de ronda. That, that dish originates here in Cebu. Okay. And that's a Filipino, popular Filipino dish and proudly Cebuano. So it's like a, it looks like a braised pork belly. Pork right? belly. Mm -hmm. And then that, with uh, some eggs? Some eggs. Mm -hmm. That's just an additional um, bonus. <laughs> bonus, <laughs> bonus dish for us. Dish. And then the... Uh, puso. Puso. Okay. Puso. okay. Yeah. Hanging rice. So we call this the binaki style puso okay. because it looks like a frog. Looks like a frog, okay. Right. And if we open this up, you can see there's some yeah. red pieces there's in there? Is that, is that red rice? That's, uh, red rice. Um, okay. that what, that's what makes um, karkar poso unique from other poso in okay. Cebu. The red rice. The red rice. All right, man, let's dig in. This looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still kind of learning how to eat with this poso, but you it's so it. popular here in Cebu, right? Yeah, it's very popular here in Cebu. It's in the whole Philippines, this is the only place where you can find this food. Really? Yeah, yeah. puso. Very popular. So just take the whole thing out, right? Yep. Put it on the, the plate and we're gonna go for some lechon. Uh-huh. Help yourself, Ruben. Wow, look at uh, all the skin. Let man. me have the skin first. <laughs> yeah, I'm and gonna go a little for bit of skin fat yep. meat. Go for a piece of skin here and look at that beauty. And then, yeah, I have washed my hands fat. and <laughs> yeah. So this is a this is an eating with your hands kind of thing. Mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> this is the way we do it. All right, here. all right. I like that. I'm gonna go in for a piece of that big chunk of fat and meat and some of the pizza. Mm. I want to savor everything. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Super oily, fatty, but then the skin gives it that texture, that crunch. With the mm -hmm. puzo, it's really a nice way to eat it because it's like a nice dense rice and it soaks up all that juice. Mm -hmm. It's very handy. Yeah. You can hold it this way and munch. <laughs> yeah, it's like a perfect little snacking uh, rice 
and there's tons of different cuts in here. You were telling me that the ribs should be quite flavorful because mm -hmm. that's where all the spices and herbs, I think this is a rib right here. Let me just go with my fingers. That's the ribs? Yeah, let me try some of that. Oh yeah. Oh wow. So they stuff it. Stuff it with, you know, lemongrass. Mm, lemongrass, yeah. Salt, herbs, spices in mm -hmm. there. Yeah, you can taste all that flavor in there, that lemongrass. Taste with the puso. Mm. Yeah. I could get used to eating this. <laughs> how about having the spicy mm -hmm. chan too? I'll go teach for it right now. <laughs> teach you wrong. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Ultra crunchy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a super nice contrast with the really tender Lachon meat. It's mm -hmm. almost like the same texture as the skin, but this is, has a lot more saltiness and it's really airy, a little bit oily. Mm -hmm. That crunch is crazy. Especially when it cools down. Mm -hmm, right. mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I want to try this dish next. Mm -hmm. This one once again? That's Humba de Ronda. Humba mm. de Ronda. Some say it came, it derived its name from um, contraction of two Cebuana words. Humok and Baboy. Humok nga Baboy. Or soft pork. Soft pork, okay, mm. cool. And cool. others say Humot nga Baboy. Humot nga Baboy? Yeah. <laughs> Aromatic. Pork, aromatic pork. Okay, oh, right. so it's not just the pork belly because I see this is a little piece of uh, maybe rib or there's some bone in there yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, many Cebuanos prefer the tilugun, the tilugun, the feet part the of the feet, the knuckle. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh, the knuckle. yeah, yeah, the really yeah. fatty part. Yeah, exactly. This looks like quite there's uh, a lot more of collagen. Okay. Yeah, a lot of collagen, good for your skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow, the flavor in there. Yeah, uh, it's packed. homemade by mm -hmm. the way. Feels like so home cooked, mm -hmm. like a heirloom recipe taste, and really meaty, packed full of flavor. Wow, it just explodes with flavor. Mm. Kind of reminds me of a Chinese style braise. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, it derived its recipe from Chinese mm. uh, cooking, Chinese mm -hmm. way. Cooking. But now it's very Filipino. It's a very Filipino. <laughs> the uh, the town of Ronda is just at the back of Car Car. Oh, really? Thanks. So it's a very uh, local dish then. Local mm -hmm. dish. What a meal. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. This has been incredible. Pleasure. The city of Lechon here in Car Car. And <laughs> thank you to your aunt for yeah. having us and preparing this for us. It's incredible. Let's eat. Let's eat. <laughs> Non-stop. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, man, where have you brought me? All I've got here is the biggest beer bottle I've ever mm -hmm. seen, and it says extra strong. Yes, it on the is. Front. We've got Red Horse. This is um, our introduction to you, Luke, okay. of the, the Red Horse beer. It's a, a favorite here in the Philippines, yeah. of course, Red Look at Horse. The size that thing. All right, so. Nice. Spill the beans. What? Where have you brought me? So we're here at Azul. Uh, Azul's Tuslubua. Tuslubua is a, a local street food that started out in the market areas in the downtown where people used to just put in pig brains inside a wok full of hot oil. Okay. And then people just buy puso right. and then they dip the rice in into the, the bubbles of the brains. Okay. Right? That's why it's called Tuslub, which is to, to dip. Yeah. And bua is bubbles. All right, we've sauteed the onions. What's this brain going in now? Now this is a. The pig brain, okay. of course, it's oh, frozen still. Only a little yeah. bit, huh? Just a little bit for now. So this is the brain, the pig stock. brain stock. Okay, yeah? okay. So we got with, onions, we've got... With uh, parts of big pig, pig brain there at the bottom too. Soy sauce in there, right? Yes, yeah, soy and, sauce uh, and onions. a little bit of oil? Yes. All right, oh, and you also put some liver in there too. There's some liver there too. Look at that, it's thickening right up. Yes. That's, that's the pig brain right there. Imagine I that. love the DIY. Right? Oh yeah, that's starting to look real good actually. What do we got here, chicharron? This is chicharron, just to add a little bit of a crunch. A pork crackling. Add more, more texture. Mm -hmm. Just put that in there. Because we're, we're just about done actually. You can okay. actually start tasting that already. We've got the pusut. Pusut. Chef Paolo mm -hmm. has uh, prepared our tuslub bua. So that's the bua. The the this is the bubbles. act of doing the tuslub. Mm -hmm. so okay, tuslub. Put dip it, it in, in yeah. dip it in there. Like look you at see, that. Yeah, look at that, yeah. Oh, wow. So you get a mixture of everything, yeah. taking a huge bite. Champion. Oh, yep, that's it. That's tuslub bua for that's you. Awesome. No weird flavor at all. No. Mm, the texture with the rice 
it just perfectly laps it up mm -hmm. and then it's got some onion in there, some soy in there. It's starting to get a little bit crispy on the bottom. Very smooth texture. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can totally get right? down with this. I could sit here, drink beer. You can add a little bit more dip. garlic. Oh. Just a little finish there. Oh, wow. You guys know me. I'm not a huge brain or organ fan, but that was seriously good. Like, no joke, amazing flavor. We completely polished it off, and uh, the food tour continues here in Cebu. Let's go. Nighttime now, I can feel the energy. Cebu really comes alive at night. I can feel it, right? Especially if you take a whiff of the air, yeah. it smells nothing but food. Yeah, exactly. And we've come to an area of town called Tisa, uh, a part of uh, Cebu City, mm -hmm. where there's a street that offers non-stop shomai. Shomai, so Chinese style dim sum almost, and, and you can see it right here steaming away. They've got a big basket full of it. So there's actually two different kinds, Paolo. That's what? Japanese shomai and regular pork shomai. It's just constant uh, flow of people buying these shomai. Look at these. All right, we're going to order some up. Try it out. It's served with a yes, nice looking sauce. It's served with nothing, but this is the best chili oil that you can get. Chili oil, right on. That's of course, it my goes name. perfect with puso still. <laughs> really? Yes. All right, eating it with rice. Yes. Let's try it out. You can find shomai everywhere nowadays. Mm -hmm. But it's within this street that people go to all the way till the wee hours of the morning after a night out when you're drunk and you still come here and eat shomai with a chili sauce and puso. Yeah, you weren't joking. That chili oil is good. Phenomenal. Right? So good. It's got a little bit of a tanginess. That's true. And then really soft meat on the inside. I think that's one of the things that set them apart mm -hmm. uh, from the, the different stalls that you can find in the street. It's the sauce. That sauce, yeah, you're totally right about that. That sauce makes this people eat that so good. Oh yeah, like, eat it with rice. Up, yeah, yeah. Straight up. Mm. <laughs> All right, man, another Cebu classic, the shomai. I got my chili pick out. <laughs> Look at this. He's taking the chili oil home. It's so that good. good. It's, it's golden so good. oil. But I am hitting the wall here. I'm stuck. We gotta go for dessert. Um, let's have some dessert. Paulo has brought me to Melton's, which is like the OG place for halo halo, which is the uh, quintessential Filipino dessert. We ordered one of these, the super special. All right, Paulo, what do we got here? I see some purple things, I see some green things, some pink things. You know what, Luke, to be honest with you, I don't know what that is. <laughs> no, seriously, this is the Filipino halo halo. Yeah. It's a, it's a novelty dessert that's become famous worldwide because it's just a mix of anything that you can put in inside a bowl that uh, tastes good and sweet yeah. and cold and refreshing. refreshing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, really a mix and match because that's what halo halo means. It's, it's really it means to mix it? To mix. So should I mix right? it up? You can mix it up. But, yeah. So there's a, a foundation of ice. Shaved ice in the bottom. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. But we can this, see it there. this here at Mountain is a little bit different because I think they, they have a, a specialized system of the ice where they mix in the milk into the ice. Okay, so shaved they, milk. So it's kind of like shaved milk. Right, right? on. You go in there sure, too. Sure, man. There's no way I can uh, finish this go myself. Ahead, go ahead. I love that purple. It's a good bite, bang. right? Let's try it. Mmm. Mm. Good. Oh. Right? It's not as sweet yeah. as the one I tried before. It's you good. get the contrast textures because yeah. of the cornflakes in there. The crunchiness too. of the cornflakes yep. and some of the nuts too. Yep. And then you have some of the beans, a little bit of jelly there too. Yeah, yeah. Some gold even sometimes. Well, so, I love how it's not too sweet because I remember when I was in Manila, I had one. It was much too yeah, sweet for me. Yeah. But this is like really uh, mild sweetness. You get your sweetness from, well, sometimes mm. you, they put in a lot of sugar in it, right? Yeah, yeah. But some of the establishments, they also have like, they focus on the, the flavor. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of the sweetness from the different fruits that you get or whatever you put in mm -hmm. inside into the, the whole bowl. So it's a, a really good mix. This has got to be the most famous Filipino dessert yes, of all. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, perfect way to end the day then. It's huh? become a, a huge 
uh, fad everywhere too. Yeah, right? Especially the with the ube too. Oh, yeah. so the, the purple color. So you get the color of everything. Definitely a perfect way to cap your uh, hot street food day sensation in here in Cebu, right? Yeah. Especially for a hot day like oh, this. Oh yeah, right on. Please enjoy, man. <laughs> So I'm with uh, Rod, my guide today, and uh, Mr. Romeldo. This is his family and this is his home. So we're going to be going out together, yeah. hiking into the mangroves. Yes. And uh, how, do you, how do you eat the worm, Rod? We can use, uh, what's that, lemon. Lemon, yeah. Yeah. Vinegar? And, yeah, or vinegar. Okay. But he said it's much better to use uh, pin, um, lemon. But you're eating it raw, right? Yeah. Raw. <laughs> okay, I'm so we're going to try it raw. <laughs> And then we're gonna bring some back here and, and cook it too. Yeah, we you can cook it. it. Yeah. Ah, you've got the calamansi. Yeah. <laughs> right here, ready to be eaten right in the mangroves. Yeah. <laughs> Tastes good. Yeah. Yeah. Set up. Set up. So Mr. Romeldo's house is right on the edge of where the mangroves grow, and they go all the way until it hits the sea. And right now it's about 1 p.m. It's low tide, so we're able to walk down into the mangroves. Otherwise, there'd be too much water. making our way through the mangroves here. Um, this is quite a unique environment. I'm sure there's all kinds of creepy crawlers in here, but we are looking for some rotten mangrove trees because that's where you find the tamalock worms. They're actually a mollusk, but people call them wood worms because they live inside the wood. <laughs> this is not easy going. The mud is thick, about knee deep in the mangroves here. It's pretty cool because this is brackish water, half salt and half fresh water. And not far from here are some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Yet, here I am, knee deep in mud in the mangroves, going to find a worm to eat raw. Sometimes I question my life. But I hope you guys like the video. This very well might be the most crazy place I've ever gone for a meal. Oh man. Woo. <laughs> Oh, it's loaded. There's a lot in there. Para por cada 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 muy para la cuana sin. Salvo un poquito ahí. So Mr. Ronaldo just found some fallen uh, mangrove, some kind of half rotten trees and uses his ax to chop them wide open. And these things are absolutely packed full of tamalock. You can see why they call them a worm because they do look like a worm, but it's not, it's actually a mollusk. And they create these holes in the wood. They kind of burrow themselves into that rotten mangrove wood. And <laughs> we hit the gold mine there. <laughs> of Tamil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. yeah. That one's 
one is loaded. Yeah, buoy. Wow, that is huge. But we have uh, much more bigger here. Oh, really? Yeah. And so wow. this is the <laughs> absolute biggest one yeah. that uh, Mr. Romeldo nice. found. Yeah, they do have a little shell at the bottom. Right. And just that check out the good. size of that. That's like a foot long. Oh, that's more than a foot long. Oh my. Can you eat this raw? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> and look at okay. look at all these right here. This thing is just packed oh, full of them. Some people say they call it the longest oyster in the world. Yeah. I can see why now. It is kind of like an oyster looking. Oh, I'm gonna eat this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. He says it's good. It's good. <laughs> Woo. Set up. All right. Set up. Yeah. Woo. All right. Uh, katawan niya para lalabas yung mga kinain niya na ano yung ganun yun yan ang ano niya so they're full of mud and dirt because they eat that rotten wood and he's cleaning them out right now use the little piece of the bone or the shell to kind of slice it open then clean out all that uh, gunk and of course they've yeah, offered me yeah. the biggest one <laughs> uh, five minutes yeah, sir. He said he, oh. he created uh, yeah. in five minutes oh. uh, after the cleaning of the yeah. woodworm, uh, it uh, create. Uh, yeah. Oh, it yeah. starts yeah. to create like a slime around it. Oh. So it actually starts to secrete a slime around it after yeah. it's uh, taken out of the wood after about five minutes. He said, and so I think it's just eaten with a little bit of calamansi. No vinegar. No vinegar. Much better the calamansi. All right, yeah. calamansi is much better. I thought we were gonna have a lot of vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This bone. Yeah. We're yeah. using this bone to uh, to clean the the tamilo like this one. Yan. Non. Yeah. Oh, so you use oh. the shell to get the oh, mud out. Yeah. What did you just tell me? It's good for what? It's good for a hangover. Good for hangover. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be better if I was really drunk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to put some chili? Yes, please. So we squeezed some calamansi in there and we're going to kind of let it sit and marinate and uh, hopefully kill off anything else that's living on it uh, for about five minutes and also some chilies. I asked for extra chilies. The time has come. No more stalling. <laughs> Mr. Romaldo and I are yeah. going to try one out. So, oh, what? We're going to try some of the, I guess, just a little bit of the kind of slime, slimy water. Mm. Oh yeah, Ooh, spicy. <laughs> yeah, good. That's what I want. Gonna go. Yeah. Got my finger. Oh. I gotta go for the big one. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Hey. That's the texture. <laughs> that is the texture. Ooh, spicy sweetness coming from I guess just the woodworm itself. Because yeah. it's actually very sweet. Uh, I'll go for another bite. Want another one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow, that is unique texture for sure. It's halfway between like purely slimy and like an oyster. What an experience. Thank you. Sarap. Sarap. Wow. Rod, is this your first time? It's my second time. Second time? Yeah, yeah, it's my second time. This one is very serious, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Mmm. It's much better that I uh, have a chili. Uh, chili. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, I heard a story from my friend Keith. I don't know how true the story is, but the name Tammy Lock comes from an American couple that uh, once saw the woodworm, and he said to his wife. Tammy, look. <laughs> Apparently, that's the name. Is it true, Rod? I don't know. 
I just heard that. Just now. I, I definitely can't verify that story. I guess we're going to cut up some more uh, mangrove and take the rest of our uh, harvest back uh, to Mr. Romaldo's house and try to cook them into a dish called paksu. Wow. Oh, yeah. He said, uh, if the tummy look uh, so hard to uh, get on the on the wood, you have to hit you, the wood. You, yeah, to hit the wood. Uh, okay, so they side fall out. Side, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the whole uh, tummy lock. Mm, okay. With this one and also the shells. Mm -hmm. How much money can you get for like one kg of tamala? One kilo, one kilo. Magkano po? Mga isang kilo niyan, mga magkano? Baso ito, ang kundi ko. Actually, hindi ka na say like uh, one glass. One glass? One glass of tamilok, it's about 80, 80 peso. 80 pesos, 80. Yeah, okay. 80 pesos. So will that big one, is that like one glass or? No. No? I think it's, uh, we need like 10 pieces of Oh wow, okay. All right, that was the tamilok hunt. Super cool. Now for the the hard part. The scarier part, to be honest. Climbing back through the mangroves. It's like an obstacle course. Every single one of these is like booby trapped. Some of them break. Some of them have little splits in them and your feet fall through. Mr. Romaldo is a gentleman. <laughs> Helping me out. <laughs> Thank you. We are back in Mr. Romaldo's house and we're preparing the tamilok to be cooked in paksu style. So he started with a little bit of calamansi on top of the tamilok, kind of marinate them in the uh, calamansi and then some tomatoes and then some diced onions and then a little bit of coconut vinegar and some soy sauce. And now he's going to actually steam the tamilok and cook it that way. It just takes about five minutes. It's actually starting to look like food now. <laughs> starting to get a little bit appetizing. Some seasoning, a little bit of salt. Five minutes. So just a little bit of seasoning and a little bit of salt to finish it off and then right into the pot on the charcoal and just cooks away for about five minutes. You don't need too long. We just ate it raw. If you cook it too long, it'll become rubbery. So the paksu is finished. I'm sitting down with uh, Mr. Romaldo and his family of seven here and you can see that they've uh, kind of gotten this unique texture now to them. It looks more like I would say like a squid uh, than it did before. And then I've got a piece of tomato here and have it with some of the rice. You can smell all that uh, all that soy sauce that was in there and that coconut vinegar. Let's try it out. Cooked uh, tamilok. This is the only way they'll cook it because usually you just eat it raw or paksu. Mmm. Mmm, no flavor. It's good. <laughs> Can't say it's my favorite ingredient in the world, but 
It's definitely edible. It's good. It's almost like an oyster, but it's its own unique thing for sure. Mm. Yum. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I'm with Carlo. We're in Bokolod. This is your city. Thank yeah. you for inviting me out. Welcome. And Welcome. we're going to be eating a lot of food today, right? Of course. A lot of food. But we've come to... First stop. Bob's. Yeah. And this is... You told me this is the oldest restaurant here in Bokolod. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Since when? 1965, I think. And it's uh, it's been an institution. Let's it's go. the first stop. Yeah, let's go. So Marianne, this is your grandfather's restaurant, right? My, yes, it? my yes. grandparents. Your grandparents, yeah. okay. So what's the, the name Bob's, where does that come from? It's a coincidence because my dad's name is Bob and okay. my mom's brother is also Bob, but it's not at all related because Bob's restaurant came from Bob's Big Boy, which happens to be their um, inspiration, okay. I guess you can call it that. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was a doctor, so um, he was doing his residency in the States, and every day they would eat at Bob's. So when they came home, they carried the name. The name, yeah, and yeah. I can feel the like American diner atmosphere. Yeah, here too. and before it was like a drive-in and people would park okay. their cars and waiters would serve there mm -hmm. on trays. And the you food you're serving is? It's super diverse. Mm -hmm. There's Filipino, there's there's American, there's it's actually a mix. I'm excited to yeah, try it. Out. Yeah, yeah, thanks yeah. Thanks for having me. Of course, yeah. thanks for coming. All right, Carla, we've got breakfast here. Tons of different foods. What do we have on the table? What's this? Well, this is Filipino traditional breakfast. This is, we call this chorizo pud pud, right? Chorizo. Yeah, it's okay. more on a uh, Spanish um, influenced dish. Right. Yeah, with some rice, uh, egg, rice, pickles. Egg. This is tapa, Filipino favorite okay. breakfast. So it's a beef. It's beef. It's beef, okay. It's like a jerky. So this is like bread with cheese, it looks like. Yeah, yeah? Okay. saimada. And then also hot chocolate, which is pretty Hot chocolate with uh, Rice Krispies, piniping. With Rice Krispies? And yeah. You, you sprinkle the Rice Krispies yes. right on top? Okay. Beautiful looking ground up sausage. And grab a little bit of these pickles maybe. These are family recipes. Mm. A couple little crispy bits in there. Some fatty pieces. The pickles are actually a little bit sweet too. Um, yeah. Not spicy, but a lot of flavor in there. So this is like okay. bigger chunks of beef with this really rich looking sauce. Gotta get a little bit of rice too. Yeah, I'm gonna take this with rice. Mmm. Whoa. Good, right? I love it, yeah. Like a soy flavor. A little bit of sweetness, but it's mm. not over the top. It's a good breakfast item. Dip it in vinegar. Dip it in vinegar. You'll hear that a lot in the Philippines. <laughs> Everything's dipped in vinegar here. Grab a piece of the top out here. Go for a little dip in the vinegar. Oh, yeah. Really well balanced, yum. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try this. What what, what did you call this one again? In Ensaimada. Ensaimada. Yeah. And just go for a bite? Yeah, just go for a bite. So it's like a super soft, fluffy bread with some cheese melted on top. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yum. It's good. Mm -hmm. One of the best Ensaimada here in Bacolod. It tastes almost like a really soft donut with Contrasting with a little bit of savoriness from that cheese. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good breakfast item. That's pretty cool. I've never seen that before. Dried rice crispies with hot chocolate. Mmm. Wow. They stay crunchy too. They don't get soggy. And it's not too sweet either. Yum. It's like a version of a liquid chocolate <laughs> yeah exactly so we have uh, another breakfast spread here what do we got carlo this I is i think this soup. is pancit molo pancit one of molo. the okay. ilongo's favorite when it comes to snacks mm -hmm. and then we've got here in the middle the satay babi this is famous of bob's mm -hmm. menu i think grilled on charcoal yeah. covered in this beautiful satay sauce, sauce. fried lumpia, fresh yeah. lumpia ubud mm -hmm. 
looks like maybe bamboo yeah. shoots bamboo in there too. Shoots, yeah, and some garlic vinegar. Yeah. And then look at this super colorful fruit punch. Fruit punch. Okay, yeah. thank you. Look at that beautiful wonton in there. Yum. How do you think? It's very light. I thought it might be spicy, but it's not at all. I'm really looking forward to this because I've heard a lot about the satay babi here. And you can have it any time of day, breakfast, hey, lunch, dinner. Take it. All right. Look dip at it all in that a sauce. You, you want to taste it as it is first, or you want to dip it in the vinegar? Well, I want to be as Filipino as possible. Well, dip it a in little the vinegar. dip in the vinegar. <laughs> all, right. all right, a little bit of garlic vinegar here. So, how is it? Oh, man. It's really good, right? That is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got a really tangy barbecue flavor, really saucy, but the meat, nice and tender. Take a little sip. Yeah. Cheers. And then we mix mm. it. Mm. Fruity. Very fruity. fruity. Yeah. Yep. Then we some watermelon. It. Yeah. Yep. Mix it up. Halo halo style. Then you take uh, take a fruit. Take a take a spoonful. Yeah. Okay. Yep. There's tons of different fruits in there. Mm. Mm. Refreshing. So refreshing. Perfect way to finish an. A good meal, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect way to start our day. Yeah. Of eating here in Bacolod. Wow. All right, man. That was Bob's. Wow. I Food think is really, really nostalgic. Where are you taking me next? So we'll go up to the mountains. Okay. We'll check some uh, native chicken farm. Mm -hmm. It's like um, uh, wild chickens that wild we'll cook. Chicken. All right. Let's do it. Let's go. So we're heading up into the mountains, about 25 minutes outside Bacolod, and it is so green and lush here. And this is Inasal country, so grilled chicken. We're heading to a farm, a chicken farm, and uh, Carlo is a chef, so he's going to be preparing us uh, some traditional native Bacolod dishes. <laughs> this is pretty crazy. So we're at the chicken farm now. Yeah, and, we're uh, at the mountains, up in the mountains, yeah. uh, a native chicken farm owned by a friend, LTP Farm. Okay, and we're gonna well, get one of these chickens. Yeah, and then we're gonna have to cook three ways of it. All right, traditional Bacolod traditional style cooking. Everything. Yeah. In a sal, papisikan, it's like cooked, it's like an oven style cooked in salt. All right. And then uh, we have this soup. Chicken with, soup. With uh, coconut juice in it. All right, I'm excited. Let's go get one of these chickens. They must have hundreds of chickens here and uh, they just put the feed out. One of these guys is gonna be unlucky lunch today. All right, we got about three or four big chickens, pretty muddy, rain's coming down. We're gonna head into uh, one of their little buildings here and uh, cook up the chicken. All right, Carla, we've got the final product of the chicken. Yeah, this is a freshly slaughtered one. Yeah. It, the meat will taste sweet. And we've also got this beautifully smelling marinade yeah. here. What we it's got in It's a personal um, uh, formulated recipe of mine. It's okay. an authentic flavor in a sal concoction. I smell some ginger in there, yeah. some vinegar, vinegar, lots of vinegar for sure. Yeah. How long do we have to marinate this chicken? Around 25 minutes will do. So everything here is traditional, even the knife. Mm. Yeah, there. Yeah. And then right in the marinade. Right in the marinade. So what do we have here, Carlos? Some innards? So innards, liver. this is the liver and yep. the gizzard. gizzard we'll have okay. to um, skewer. skewer it mm -hmm. and then marinate it for a while. Mm -hmm. And this will also be grilled? Yeah, this yep. will be grilled. This, All right. this will taste fantastic. Okay. All right. Yeah. And that goes right in that right same in marinade. The, yeah. So we prepared an oil here too. Look at the color, that super rich red color. So it's vibrant. What, what did you put in here? It's a mix of garlic, uh, chicken fat, oil, and ashiote seeds. Ashiote seeds, okay, so yeah. really unique 
ingredient and then you'll use that basting it on the yeah, grill yeah right on oh you gotta baste it uh, it smells so, so good that it will really look authentic <laughs> besides the inesel we're also cooking a couple other dishes what do you got yeah go uh it's called in our uh longer term in our own language we call it papisik which we are cooking inside a bed of salt a bed of salt uh, yeah, with chicken uh, chicken stuffed with the uh, lemongrass wow so I any mean, i'll show you sure Almost not like much. a baked chicken yeah, with not, salt. Yeah, not yep. much ingredients because there's uh, there are no ingredients really in the mountains. Simple Just, cooking. Yeah, simple cooking. Mm -hmm. All about that chicken flavor. Yeah. yeah so chicken's been marinating for about 25 minutes. Yeah. Taking it up uh, to the grill using charcoal on the grill. I'm guessing. Charcoal. You bet. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I'm here with the owner of the farm. You. How many chickens do you have? Almost a thousand. Almost a thousand. Wow. And he's just offered me a. San Miguel Pilsen. Cheers. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Load it up. You can see all that ginger sticking to the outside of the chicken too. All right. And then baste it with oil. The rich color of that oil. Look at that. And that's from the this achiote is, seed, yeah, right? This is freshly made out of the kitchen. And then garlic, chicken fat. Yeah. Look at that red. Look at that smoke from the dripping oil onto the charcoal. Wow. That'll add a lot of flavor too. I'll flip it over. I'll flip it over yeah, so you okay. can base the other side. Yeah. I want to get this completely soaked in to the wow. meat. Wow. It's like an artist's work. <laughs> it's like you're painting Mona Lisa <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> instead of chicken. I think it's more beautiful. <laughs> you can see that marinade and the oil starting to caramelize on the outside. A little bit of charred bits on there. And this is next level. Filipino barbecue, my mouth is watering. Look at this, look at this, look at this. That is a beauty. Wow, barbecue chicken to the max. Extra chicken oil, just, just to make it silky smooth. This is the final result. My mouth is watering. This is seriously delicious looking. Uh, in SL. And then we've also got a set up over here for uh, making a chicken soup. And then there's another chicken dish. So it's a chicken day here in Bacolod. So we'll be assisted by the brother of uh, the owner. We'll uh, cook a pure native chicken soup called mm -hmm. Tinola with nothing on it but ginger, lemongrass, and some onions. Nice. In with the ginger, in with the onions, and that's it? That's it. Wow. So this is the papisig, the baked chicken with the salt, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, wow. That smells phenomenal, wow. You can smell that lemongrass, so fragrant. Chicken is baked nice. You can see some of the lemongrass sticking out the bottom there. Thank okay. you. Okay. That's the price. And then pour a little chicken oil on the rice. Okay, a little bit of this oil right on the rice. Oh wow. yeah. That looks amazing on that white rice. And then crushed and then some garlic. Of this garlic, this fried crushed garlic. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. So our rice is prepared. Okay. So what part do you want? Do I'm gonna go the for breast? the, the, the leg. leg. Yeah, okay. I think this one looks good. I'll right go here. for the breast part. All right, look at that. Beautiful. So we're just going in with our fingers. Yeah. All right, let's go in with our hands. Oh man, that is juicy, delicious chicken. Oh man. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. Chase it with a little bit of rice. That's seriously next level Filipino barbecue. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful chicken. And I love it. With that oil. Wow. Mm -hmm. Next we will try is the liver. Okay. Okay. Get some. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Mm. It's very creamy. Mm. Very faint iron flavor. I'm gonna take this recipe back home with me. <laughs> I love this barbecue chicken. Wow. Mm. wow. So, so on to the next dish, look at that. Oh, wow, another drumstick. Wow. This one's piping hot. So this is very simple, just with that 
uh, lemongrass, which is very fragrant, and then a little bit of salt. Natural flavor mm. of the chicken. The lemongrass is amazing. It's really strong, actually, even though it's just stuffed inside. Mm. It's infused into the meat. The meat of the chicken is really, really good. Mm -hmm. This is how they produce chickens here in this farm. Yeah. Native chickens here mm -hmm. in Bacolod. This is the dish to try in Bacolod, in a cell. Taking a break from the inner cell to check on the chicken. I can smell that lemongrass. It smells so fragrant. And just a little bit of onions and ginger in there as well. Mm -hmm. What part do you want? Still the leg part? Ah, sure, okay. whatever. Give me a drumstick. I'll be happy with that. Wow, wow that's soft. Look, Look at, at that. that. Look at that. So soft. So the flavor is all here. Have a little mug of soup. Yeah. Ginger, chili, lemongrass, chicken, onions. Oh. Yeah, it's perfectly comforting. seasoned. Yeah, yum. It gives you comfort in this kind of weather. Yeah, a little bit rainy today. Yeah, that's perfect. So this is the chicken from the tinola dish. <laughs> from the tinola. Look at how oh, tender man, this that is. is. Seriously hot. How are you doing that? <laughs> well, I'm used to <laughs> dip it in the soup, reducing yeah. it, reducing. Mm. Mm. Oh. That's comforting. Mm -hmm. That's perfect uh, Filipino comfort food. Most um, natural tasting chicken you can ever have. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank See you, you again, you okay? Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, what a meal. My first Inasal experience here in Bacolod, the home of Inasal. I love the garlic uh, achiote seed oil with it. So good. It's time for dessert though. Let's go. We've driven back down into Bacolod town. We've come to this place called Kwan, and they specialize in local uh, Filipino desserts. delicacies. Yeah. yeah, and here in Bacolod, it's very famous for the sugar. A lot of sugar is exported around the world from Bacolod. Yeah, and then Kwan um, uh, concentrates on merienda sena. We call it merienda sena. It's a mid-afternoon snack. Okay. So we're pretty stuffed after that chicken, but uh, I'm ready for some sweets. It's really famous here in Bacolod, so let's try it out. So the lovely folks here at Kwan Delicacy have brought us out <laughs> pretty much A everything lot. on the menu, it looks like. But uh, we're going to try some of them out, but I need your expert help on identifying what we have here. So In our own dialect, we call this Kalamay Hati. It's made from sugar, coconut, okay. glutinous rice, wow, el sticky. Yeah, this is my favorite. This is cassava cake. Cassava made, cake, yeah. okay. Napoleonas. Nice. Napoleonis. Okay. Their, own, their own version. It's okoy made from shrimp. Um, shrimp? Yep. And then back here looks like some coconut. Inday inday. This is inday inday. This is coconut. glutinous flour with coconut and then topped it with uh, muscova de sugar. Wow, okay. Yeah. This is puto cochinta. Also a glutinous flour. This is the famous piaya. Piaya. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then this is the black cochinta. So many yeah. different desserts. We gotta try it this one because it's yeah. calling my name. It looks okay. like a, almost like a chocolate pudding or something. I know it's it's not, but it's kind of it looks sticky. like it. Yeah. Wow. Oh man. All right. Let me try it out. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's basically mochi. With a little bit of coconut almost flavor. Mochi. Mm -hmm. wow. Very very. Chewy. What did you say the name was again? Inday Inday. Served on a, looks like a banana yeah. leaf. And then you have to scoop some muscovado sugar, put some thing All right, on it. so yeah. some like brown sugar there. Yeah. Coconut, glutinous rice. Yep. All right. Mm. Very, very traditional tasting. Mm. Very coconut flavor. Do yeah. you like it? Mm-hmm. Coconut, yeah. really strong flavor on this one. Oh, that's really good. It's really light, good. it's light. Yeah. Mm. So a little dip in the vinegar. Yeah. This is very crunchy feeling. I know it's gonna be uh, messy. Mm. Mm. Super crunchy. Shrimpy. Yeah, a little bit of seafood flavor. Yeah. Balanced with the vinegar though. Mm -hmm. Very Filipino tasting. Oh man, that was a lot of sweets. Bacola, like I said, is a major exporter of sugar. So as you can imagine, they have a wide variety of sweets, we are still going for more food this evening. Red snapper. Red snapper. Maybe yeah. my nine kilos. Nine kilos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, low line. Nine. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me take a picture. 
So the Philippines is an archipelago of islands. There's got to be good seafood. Where have you brought me tonight? Right now we're in Jota. It's the very popular place to go to seafood mm -hmm. and a very wide variety of seafood yeah. you can choose from. Check out all these seafoods. Yeah. We've got some slipper lobsters here. There's snappers and uh, marlin groupers I see, some uh, blue crabs. And uh, there's one special uh, clam back here. What did you say this clam? This was? is, we call this the wall. It's an angel wing clams. Only comes out once Look at that. in a year. Look at that. Look at that. It reminds me of a uh, gooey duck. Smile. Smile. <laughs> Abalone? Abalone. Yeah. Some of our seafood has arrived. I'm already seriously impressed. This scallop dish looks incredible. Look it's like at that. Lightning fast too. Yeah, I mean it came right out. That was only maybe two or three minutes. Looks like some garlic. Uh, yeah, it's just grilled scallops. Grilled, yeah. And then what yep. do we got here, Carla? This is a grilled blue marlin. One of the nicest fish you'll have. Wow, look at that char on that marlin. Yep. Beautiful. I think we got to go the for garlic. Oh, wow. perfect. A little bit of oil in there. Cheers. Oh man. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm, it's got so a similar good. flavor yeah. uh, as the chicken earlier actually. Because of the asciote oil. The asciote oil, right. That is a seriously thick cut of marlin. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And I might go for a little squeeze of, of calamansi. Uh, calamansi. Juice me in, man. Yeah, yeah, Juice there me you in. go. Wow. <laughs> You don't have to complicate fresh fish. Mm -hmm. It's as good as its own. A little bit of garlic on yeah. top. Yeah, incredible. Carlo, what have we gotten ourselves into? Wow. <laughs> this is a feast piece, for man. more than a family can take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easily. We have some incredible looking seafood. So first off over here, what do we have? This is a beautiful looking yeah, fish this, head soup, right? I think that this fish is a barracuda fish. Barracuda fish, yeah. okay. It's tinola. Cook tinola way. Tinola, okay. Yeah, and then we've got the slipper lobster here steamed. in the middle. Yeah. Covered in sauce. We've got some prawns back here as well. Blue crab. Blue crabs, steamed. And then angel wing clams. Yeah, the angel wings. And these are a very seasonal yeah. thing, right? Very only, rare. Yeah, very rare. Only about two months out of the year. And what is this dish here? This is ceviche. I think this is tangige, um, swordfish. Yeah. Swordfish. And what do you call ceviche here? Kinilao. Kinilao, okay. Kinilao. So raw fish with uh, coconut milk, is it? Or just lime just, juice in this one? No, it's just vinegar. Vinegar, and oh, okay. a little calamansi. And calamansi, okay. Yeah. And they even have inasal here too. <laughs> so <laughs> not strictly seafood, but uh, wow, my mouth is watering. This is just absolutely incredible. Let's dig in. So we're gonna start you with the, the fish head. The fish head, and there's some green tomatoes in there, some chilies. I'm guessing it's gonna be like a sour, sour soup. Whoa. Yum. It reminds me of like a sinigang. Actually, they used bat one in it. Yeah, I love it. Nice and sour. Mm. I think this is probably the thing I'm most excited for, the angel wing clams. And look at this. Should there be. is so much meat in there. That is insane. That is absolutely crazy. And there's a little bit of juice at the bottom of this pan. I'm gonna go for Reduce it. Extra <laughs> juicy. Whoa. I can taste some coconut in there, for sure. Fresh coconut flavor. It's the freshness that, uh, it's, a na it's natural. There's no any There's coconut. no coconut in there? That's the pure flavor of it. Wow, it tastes like a tropical fruit. Mm. All right, let's one. go for a half Slipper of this lobster. Slipper lobster. Look at that. Wow. Beautiful sauce. This is the tail part, I think. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, that was easy. Came right out. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is some fresh seafood, man. Wow. I don't 
even know how to describe it. It's just so good. <laughs> Kinilao in our own dialect. Kinilao, okay. Yeah, it's Viche. This, it's is Viche, a, yeah. this is a very, very traditional one. Mm -hmm. Just soak in vinegar. Mm -hmm. Swordfish, a yeah. little bit of onions, some green tomatoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love the sourness in it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Taste that calamansi. And then a little kick with the chili in it. This is crazy. I'm loving, I'm loving this place. So Bacalod isn't just amazing for its uh, incredible chicken, but of course, you gotta come here for the seafood too. Yeah. Right. Out of all the dishes on the table, these angel clams are definitely my favorite. If you come here to Bacalod during March and April, you gotta try the angel wing clams. Yeah. Incredible. They also have their own house vinegar here with tons of chilies in there. Go for a little dip. One of these shrimps. Mm, wow. Yeah. The shrimp is sweet on its own. And then a little bit of heat from those chilies. Sourness okay. from the vinegar. This is just an incredible meal. Wow. I'm blown away. <laughs> What's up, man? Nice to hey, see man. you again. We're here at the market. What, what market is this? This is the Bacolod Central Public Market. All right, there's some street food inside, I'm guessing. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of um, turu turu style, like you point what you eat. All right, we're gonna eat some breakfast. Let's okay. go. The atmosphere in here is pretty hectic. Really busy in the mornings. Lots of fruit and vegetables. And then we've got so. rice and all kinds of different things. Yeah, and then we will eat at the uh, restaurant inside that where they buy everything in here. All the ingredients from all the ingredients, market. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Using all the fresh organic ingredients here in yeah. Bacolod. Let's toro Toro it. style. Toro Toro, okay, let's go. Look at all this food here. Tons of fresh stuff, all the ingredients from the market. Yep. Oh, I'm getting hungry, man. Oh, this is wow. the spot. This or, is the spot. Cooking right in charcoal here. So we're at a place called Goldie's Eatery and lots of good looking stuff here. You have some things in mind we should order? Yep, um, this is one of my favorite uh, karinderia here, Toro Toro style in, inside the market. And uh, this is the owner. Hi. She'll uh, she'll show us around what, what to have. All right, perfect. So we'll leave it up to her to okay. choose. I think there's not a better choice than yeah. uh, the owner's choice. Yep. So let's have some uh, Toro Toro. Okay. okay. So the owner's recommendation seems to be almost every single thing yeah. on the menu. <laughs> it's like one of everything. Yeah, well, that's all right. So what do we have here, Carlos? We have uh, This is lumpia. the uh, lumpia. Mm -hmm. And then this is the, we call this torta. It's a fritter. It's fritter. A, I think it's shrimp fritters. Shrimp fritters, okay. This is pork adobo. Adobo, okay, very famous. This is a Filipino version of the egg roll. Okay, it's almost like an omelet, it looks yeah. like, yeah, okay. And then we got a little soup back here. This is uh, mongo with gata. It's like a mung bean with uh, coconut milk on it, and then jackfruit. Wow, jackfruit, yeah. coconut milk soup, yeah. okay. And then here? This is chorizo. Chorizo, yeah, okay. Yeah. Some more adobo. Adobo atay with the uh, egg. Egg, okay. okay. Liver. Yeah, and then uh, some dried fish back dried here. Dried fish, little this is tiny ones. Yeah. Yeah, look at that, cool. Yep. And then, uh, what's that? Chicken adobo. Chicken adobo again, okay. This is eggplant, eggplant. sauteed eggplant. Yeah, we got some This fish. is fish paksiu, a Filipino dish. Okay, and then this one then back here. This is um, pakbet with uh, coconut milk. All right, and then I love this too, check this out. It's like a Every day, bottle of vinegar <laughs> in a Heinz Every ketchup. <laughs> restaurants here have that. You gotta have <laughs> yeah. this with vinegar. Yeah. And then of course, it's all meant to be eaten with rice. So this is like a typical Filipino breakfast, right? Yep. All right, okay. this mung bean with uh, coconut milk. Yeah. and uh, tons it's of veggies one of in our there. Uh, favorite yeah. dish. Let's put it back on my right here. Mm -hmm. Tasty. Mm -hmm. You can really taste that coconut milk. Yeah, it's it. really rich. Yep. Creamy coconut milk with the mung beans are super soft. Then I think they cooked it with dried fish. Dried fish, yeah. There's a little bit of a fishy like umami, taste fishy taste yeah. to it, yeah. yeah. So this is the pork, the adobo. pork adobo. Yeah. Probably Philippines' most famous dish, I'd say, right? Yep. Yeah, so cooked with vinegar, soy, vinegar, garlic, soy, garlic yep. a little sugar. Yeah, yep. that beautiful sauce. I'll get a little bit of that, man. bring it back on my rice here. Oh, man. Yes, adobo. How was it? Mm. It's a little mm. bit sweet. 
and the pork really lean. Signature bacala taste a little sweet. A little bit sweet. We're in yeah. sugar country here. Yeah. Yum. So these are super tiny little fish. Do you know what kind of fish that is? I think we called it sup sup. And you gotta eat this with the vinegar so we'll pour. It looks like it's gonna be crunchy. You eat this with rice or just by itself? You can eat it with rice. it by itself. That is a strong seafood flavor. Yeah, vinegar cuts through that saltiness, mm. right? Yeah, it's still salty though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lumpia time. Yep. Fried spring roll. Got to go for the vinegar again once again. Just dunk it in. Yep. Okay. Mm. Not that crunchy, but not that crunchy. They, yeah. they were good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit oily. Very Looks traditional. Like there's meat in there. Yeah, it's yep. pork. Yeah. So this one's called what, Carlo? Pakbet. Pakbet. Okay. But that version has coconut milk oh, in wow. it. Oh, wow. It looks like a big piece of squash in there. Yeah, or, yeah squash and beans. And beans. you got to put a little pork in it. Get the pork. Get the pork, OK. There's a pork. There is a pork in there? OK. okay. And some creamy sauce. Oh. That reminds me of Canadian home cooking, because we eat a lot of squash. A lot of veggies like that, and they're stewed, really soft, wow. and then with the pork. Yum. Yeah. What a breakfast. Very traditional. Right inside Bukalod, uh Central Market. It's cheap too. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, man. So many delicious foods yeah. here. So, how do you think about the Toro Toro inside really the cool. market? So usually Toro Toro means like you point and choose what yeah. you want, right? That's right. But uh, luckily we had the owner's recommendation, <laughs> and so I wouldn't don't change it. Don't have difficulties of uh, choosing it. Yeah, exactly. But there's so many different things to try here, and super cheap. 250 pesos for I don't know how many dishes that was. Like 10, 10 dishes? dishes? Yeah, at least. It almost reminds me of, like Spanish tapas because all these small like tasting plates. I love it. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. We were walking through the market and it was just overcome by the smell of coffee. They have fresh beans here. They're uh, grinding the beans. And they have local beans too, right? Yeah, like uh, the place called Canlaon from Negras Occidental. Okay. It's our native coffee. And then you can, as you can see, they're selling it. It's very native, very local tasting. Mm -hmm. Luckily for us, right across the street from the uh, coffee bean shop is a little cafe. So let's go have a cup. Pretty cool. Cafe right in the market. They roast, they grind, and then serve it. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Smells amazing. Thank wow. you so much. Wow. It smells amazing. Yeah, it smells amazing. Only yeah. 15 pesos for one cup of coffee. Black coffee. And this is a real, real good quality coffee. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And of course, if you want to sweeten it up, we're in for sugar, but is uh, Bacola, so there's lots of sugar available here. What a cool atmosphere, right? In the market. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but a good coffee to start the day. Yeah. All right, I'm all hyped up on coffee now. That uh, might be the best value for quality cup of coffee I've ever had. 15 pesos. So you can cheap. find it anywhere in the world. So cheap and good. And so good. Let's do some more eating, man. Yep. So now we're at Aaron's Kansi House. And what is Kansi? Kansi is a soup dish. Bacolod uh, originated this dish. Okay. It's a little uh, sour, made with uh, beef or kara beef um, leg. Beef or water buffalo. Yeah, water yeah. buffalo. Okay, yeah. And it is absolutely packed in here. We come right at uh, peak lunch hour. So let's go inside, see how they're making the Kansi, and then try it out. So we're in the kitchen now. They've got big pots of the kansi and just check Huge this out. Chunks. Massive chunks of beef in there, yeah. right? And that, it's got some beans, it looks no, like, in there? No, this is what I'm talking about, the batuan, the souring agent. Oh, okay, batuan. This, this made the soup a, a little um, sour. Okay. You get the tangy taste from the batuan. Is it a seed? Yeah, it's a seed. It's a seed, yeah. okay. And then there's some green chilies yeah. in there. Nice, rich, red looking broth. The uh, color of that uh, broth from the achiote too. From the achiote yeah. seeds, okay. And it looks like there's a big, thick layer of oil on there. And, yep, and, uh, that's what makes grass. it delicious. Yeah, yeah. Fat is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it out. Okay, 
and my mouth is watering already. This looks absolutely incredible. It smells fantastic too. And it's just a, one single massive piece. That's one piece of beef. It's Big all chunks. still on the bone there. Tender. Look at that. It yep. is absolutely beautiful. And the broth the richness. a nice rich color. Yep. That red from the achiote seed. Achiote. And then what did you say that souring agent was? Batuan. Batuan. Okay, yep. it's a special ingredient in Look there. Look at the marrow there. Yeah, and there, <laughs> that's just incredible. I gotta save the marrow for this last. This is insane. One. Let's just try some of that broth first. Yep. Looks a little bit oily. It smells so good. So how'd you think? Dude, that is insane. It's actually not like super thick and hearty. It's a light broth, but it's just packed full of flavor. And you can so taste beefy. that. So beefy. Yeah, you can taste that sour. Everything, everything on it. Oh man. Yeah, and I can taste like a little bit of garlic in there for sure. It is somewhat oily. You can see all that oil floating on top, but that batuan is such a unique uh, sour flavor. Isn't Fruity. It? Mm. Okay. This is just crazy. Look at the Go for the meat. Go for the meat. <laughs> Look at that. Huge <laughs> chunks of beef. Yeah. Let's try that. Mm. Mm. Whoa. Mm. Mm. I thought I was going to have to chew, but it turns out you mm. can just almost drink so the tender. beef. That is, that's not even tender. That's another next level of tenderness. The fat melts in your mouth. Yeah. It's almost like the texture of uh, fatty tuna yeah. sushi just completely melts. You don't even need to chew at all. Okay, marrow time. Look at, oh my god. Oh, Look man. at that. Plop it into my spoon. <laughs> and then, <laughs> gonna go for a little bit of the broth if I can. Yeah. That is just oh, a huge man. piece Look, of marrow. And that's only this. like maybe 20% of the marrow that's in there. Look at this. Look one. at this. <laughs> All right, let's give it a try. Oh, can eat it all. Wow. Mm. Okay. It's this, a beef butter for me. Yeah, beef butter. That's a perfect way of explaining yep. it. This is the best thing I've eaten in the Philippines. Beef butter. Hands down. Best thing I've eaten in the Philippines. This is incredibly delicious. Wow. Let's see. I'm going to be coming back to Bacala just for this. Oh. <laughs> It's like a dinosaur bone. Look at the size of that. And honestly, the beef is so, so good, but the broth is even better if you can imagine. And all that marrow in there, there's none left now. And you can ask for refills of the broth as much as you want, but uh, the flavor in that broth is just insane. It's got that sour beefiness, little spice to it, but not spicy. I feel like a barbarian eating so much meat, but it's so addicting. Man, oh man. <laughs> Hands down, definitely my new favorite Filipino food. Sorry, Lechon, but this is Kansi. Is it the top one? Definitely top number Filipino one. food? Yes, seriously. That you was had a good time, incredible. huh? Incredible, yeah. I saw you going wild with that. Devouring <laughs> that beef. <laughs> so we're gonna go do something pretty unique now. Where are we going? Yeah, um, next, we're going to the factory of the Piaya. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a um, 40 minute away drive. So, a traditional dessert it's called yeah. Bong 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 Factory. Cool. Yeah. Let's go check it out. So, we've driven about 45 minutes outside of Bacolod, surrounded by sugarcane fields, to this factory uh, called Bong Bongs. And what's your name? Hi, I'm Arlen. Arden? Arlen, yeah. Nice Arden. to meet you. Nice and meet you. Uh, we're here at Bong Bong's factory and you make piaya, is that yes, right? Yes, that's right, piaya. Which is what? Uh, piaya is like an unleavened bread filled with uh, masturbati sugar. Yeah, yeah and right. we're going to get a little tour of the factory here. And how old, how long has this uh, Bong Bong's brand been around? We've been in uh, the business for uh, 37 years already. 37 years, Yeah, we wow. started in 1984. And it's a bacala specialty, right? Bacala specialty, yeah. the most famous in bacala. Synonymous with uh, bacala. It yes. smells really good in here. So we're going to see how they're, they're making it. Yeah, sure, sure. From scratch, good. and then we're gonna taste it, I hope, too, right? Sure, yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, awesome, let's go. So we're seeing how the whole process of the piaya is made here at Bong Bong's. We've got the dough here that's going through this machine, 
being flattened, and then it's being filled with a sugar mixture, right? Yeah, yeah. And I can see that this one's got a little bit of like a purple color to it. Uh, is that, what is that, ube? Yeah, it's that's ube, that's the indicator. That's, uh, we are filling it with ube muscovado sugar. Okay, and how many flavors do you have here we at Bonbon? Bon? two flavors, the muscovado sugar and the uh, ube sugar. Okay, so this one's ube, we know because of the purple. It comes out in this log, and then it comes down, it's cut into these little individual uh, little patties, and then flattened, and she's stacking them. And then what's the next step? Next step is gonna bring this to the griddle, for the PIA maker to, uh, to cook. So we're gonna pan. cook it next on the grill? Yes. Okay, cool, let's go see that. So after the PIA is flattened, uh, it's brought over to the griddles here. Yeah. Super hot. Yeah, it's super hot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know, how many are you cooking a day? This looks like thousands here, right? Yeah, we make uh, 180,000 a day. 180,000, yeah, okay. Yeah, a day. Wow, a day. So we've got uh, the ube flavor here and they're cooked, flipped, and yeah. uh, after this, what's the step? Is it finished after cooking no, like this? Uh, we cool this for a day. Cooling it for yeah, a day? Yeah, we cool it for a day, and then after cooling it, uh, we, do, uh, we pack it. You pack it up? Yeah, yeah, we pack it. And then are they sold all around the Philippines? Yeah, all around the Philippines, especially here in Visayas. Yep. We have more than 60 branches. Okay, wow, 60 branches of bongbong. So yes. you can see that they're getting nice and crispy because these griddles are toasty hot. Can I try it out? Yeah, you can try it too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, let's try it out. So, all right, just like this? Okay, Like this? Oh, wow. You can use your hand? <laughs> I already ruined one. My first try. It's hot. They're like a little bit greasy, so they're quite slippery. They're smelling good too. Am I hired or? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, I tried my best. So they're fully toasted, finished, and I'm gonna be allowed to try one myself. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> wow, this one. is a privilege. Oh, wow. You can tell that these yeah. are toasty hot. Oh, careful, it's hot. It does remind me of like a Indian or Pakistani paratha. Wow, look at that. You can see the ube in there, that purple yam. Let's try it out. Oh, wow. Mm. Really flaky, nice and toasty. A little bit crispy on the outside. Um, the ube is nice and sweet. It's a really unique sweetness. It's, uh, it's quite sweet, but it doesn't feel overpowering. It feels like really high quality sugar. Oh, man. And you have the second flavor here, right? Can I try it out? Yeah, this is the original flavor. Yeah, and that uh, is... Uh, muscovado sugar. Muscovado sugar, so like a brown sugar, unprocessed sugar. Look at that, beautiful. Let me try this one out too. Mm. It's different once it cools down. It's a little bit more flakier, yeah. a little bit more gummy, and um, you can taste a little bit of sesame in there for sure. Mm. It's really a nice natural sweet. Yeah. So how many days does it take to cook this many piaya? Just a day. This is one day. Yeah, one day to <laughs> this is almost a whole entire room full of them. And yeah. they'll sit here for a day to cool. To, to cool, then yeah. after that we pack it. So after cooling, they're packed into yes. packages of 10, you said? Yes, 10, 10 and 5. Yeah. And then they're put into these boxes here and they're shipped around uh, the Philippines. So yes, that's the yes, final yes. step yes, for the fine. famous Bong Bong Piaya. Yes. Well, thank you for showing me around. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. it was delicious. Really cool looking inside Bong Bong's factory. Now I'm at the shop. Uh, you can see they don't only have the piaya, they have tons of different things. And uh, it's known here in the Philippines as Pasalu Bong, which is basically just these little gifts that you'll bring home to your families. And Bong Bong's is uh, probably the most famous here in Bacolod for Pasalu Bong to take home. Really cool. All right, I've got my Pasulu Bong. Huge thank you to the folks at Bong Bongs. Uh, yeah, this is the most famous place for delicacies in Bacolod and even in most of the Visayas, so you gotta check it out. I think we're going for some more food here in Bacolod, going really in depth of the food culture and scene here in Bacolod. Let's go. So we're at a spot called Bakerite. This is a Bacolod barbecue specialty shop, right? Yeah, I grew up eating this one. Okay. They've been in the business for 30 years. 30 year old barbecue yeah. shop. And what is this one right here? This is uh, the Negro Signature Pork Barbecue. Okay, and we've also got tons 
of other things on the table. This here, what is it? It looks pretty fatty. This is a pork mask, cheeks or the ear Okay, part. so the face of the yeah. pork, yeah. And then we've got some uh, grilled chicken and ass. Chicken ass, okay. we call it yeah. isol. Isol, yeah. okay. And then this is pretty unique, uh, yeah. grilled bread. This is grilled dinner roll. Rolls, okay, yep. yeah. And then it looks like a little bit of oil on top. Charred with um, chicken oil in it. Yep, and then we've got some uh, pork uh, belly. I think of yeah. the belly. Yeah, and the soup here in the middle too. That's, we call, we call it, um, it's boiled pig's feet. Oh, pig's feet. Yeah. yeah. And there's some uh, There's a shiote, a shiote color. Okay, yeah. yeah. Some chili, soup. some tomatoes. Yeah. Some spare ribs back here, right? Yeah, the ribs. Yeah, and then we've got... And then this is... Wings. The wings. And then chorizo. Bacolo chorizo. Bacolo this is the chorizo. Okay. Bacolo version. Okay, so I'm really interested in this bread. How, how do you eat this bread with this meal here? You, you, you take the bread, okay. uh, broke it in half, and okay. oh, yeah. I'll take my own. Yep, and then uh, you um, make a little sandwich, huh? Make a little sandwich out okay. of the barbecue. All right, that's pretty cool. Yep. So grab some of this pork here. This looks like a nice marinated yeah. make, pork. Let's make see. like a hamburger with it. Oh, wow, that is really cool. Yeah. Okay, so take a little couple of two pieces in there. Yep. Put them in between my grilled bread. And then <laughs> take a really good bite with it. It's like a slider almost. Mm. Mm. Interesting, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the proper way to eat uh, Bacolod's barbecue with a grilled bread. I love the soft roll, but it's got a little bit of a crunch to it because yep. of the... Of the grill. The grill, yeah. yeah. Charred dish. The pork has a sweet Touch marinade it. to it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm. This chorizo is calling my name. Look at that. And you said this is bacala style. Yeah. Chorizo, okay. So sausage, probably a little bit sweet, I'm guessing, too. Sweet, savory, yep. charred taste of it. Smoky. Mm. Tastes like there's quite a bit of fat in there, too, so it really mixes in with the lean meat. And okay. melt. You, you taste everything, right? Yeah. yeah. And then there's a little spice to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It tastes like almost honey. Yeah. Like garlic honey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's try this one out. This is the, the face. The pork, so some cheek. ear, cheeks, yeah. yeah, everything. And then I, I'm gonna go for a little dip, dip of the vinegar. vinegar. Yeah, for sure. This looks like it's gonna be pretty fatty. <laughs> Perfect with the vinegar. Mm. That's Whoa. for that richness. It's super fatty, but it just completely liquefies. And the vinegar helps balance it all out. Melts in your mouth, huh? Mm -hmm. The fat. Whoa. No. Really the good. smoky flavor, too, is just really pronounced. So they just brought us out another special dish here. Yeah, what is this? This is a chicken intestine. Okay, what do you call it? It's isao. Isao? Yep. Okay. <laughs> the look of that, it's just like squiggly lines right <laughs> on there. Cool. Chicken uh, intestine. Mm, really really crunchy. A, and then there's a little cream inside. Mm -hmm. Did they say it? Mm -hmm. But no weird flavor. Yeah. No, no vinegar. No funkiness? With it. No, yep. not at all. That one gets nice and crispy. I mm. like the crunch to it. Yeah. Yum. Wow, so many different dishes. This is crazy. What a day of eating here in Bacola. Whew, I honestly think Carlo is trying to kill me. <laughs> we are eating like maniacs here in Bacola. The food is amazing though, and the people are so friendly and generous. And he insists we go have a, a one more stop tonight, so we're going for more NSL. Let's go. Where have you brought me tonight, Carlo? So we are at the number one spot for food in Bacolod. It's the Manokan country. Manokan country. As what the um, poster said, home of the best the chicken, chicken in Asa. All right, so it's not just one restaurant. It looks like there's a bunch of different restaurants. Yeah, right? but I think I only have three choices. Three choices, all yeah. right, that's still plenty. Okay. Which one are we gonna go to? I think I... I Aidas. 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 Let's try it out. Okay. Sounds good to me. Super pumped for this. <laughs> Let's go. All right, man, I can smell the Inesol already. Yeah. And they're jam packed today. It's absolutely packed. Yeah. Saturday. Is it always busy like this, though? Every day. Really? People love sleep in Inesol. Look at how yep. insane this is. Everybody's got the chicken. Oh, man. I'm yeah. ready to eat. I thought I wasn't hungry, but now I am. <laughs> so be ready. Let's do it. 
I'm happy to see there's finally some vegetables on the menu here in Bacola. Yeah, that's the only vegetable you can eat with it in a salad. <laughs> so we've got a calamansi here. What do we do? Squeeze it in here? Yeah, just yeah. squeeze the calamansi and okay. pinch the uh, chili. Pinch the chili? Like yeah. break it in half? Break it in half. Okay. Go crazy with it. Yeah, okay. You, you should really uh, crush it. Really crush it? Okay, like yeah, this, yeah. Pour some little vinegar. Okay, and grab little, the vinegar over yeah. here too. A and little soy. I love the vinegar here in the Philippines. It's always packed full of flavor with the chilies, with the garlic, sometimes onions and other things. And this is a perfect dipping sauce for the inasal. Inasal. And a little touch of the soy sauce. Just a little bit? Yeah, just a little more? bit. More? A little more. That's enough. All right. And, that's and then the, you swirl it with your finger. With my finger? Well, it's still uh, coronavirus time, so I'll just do this. Let me? <laughs> <laughs> No better way to end our trip in Bacola than with some inasal. And honestly, uh, this doesn't look as good as the one that you cooked for me, but this is the best in town yeah. as far as commercial and inasal goes. I right? think uh, of all the restaurants we ate, yeah. you saved the best for last. Yeah, yeah. But all for right. sure, you'll like it. Beautiful chicken grilled on charcoal and then uh, marinated with that yeah, garlic it's a and achayote seeds. Yeah. Right? And we've also got a plate of rice. A little bit yellow rice. Yeah, inasal rice, I call it inasal rice. Inasal rice, okay, with some uh, fried garlic, fried on, garlic top. on top. So what do you think? Should we go for a bite? Okay. Grab a stick. I'm just and gonna just go, go in, right? Yeah, yeah, let's just try. go in raw. Wow. Wow. It is better than it looks. That's seriously juicy chicken. Yeah. Smoky. You can really taste the base of the asiote oil in it. It is, and you got the charred flavor too. It is so tender and yeah. juicy. I gotta take a piece here. Yeah. And uh, dip it. Go for a little dip in my special Me sauce too. here. A little bit of chili, yeah. calamansi, soy vinegar. Taste it with rice. Mm. That's way better. This is comfort food. Ma'am, it's, it's just grilled chicken, but that base, that marinade. The complexity of these uh, in a sal is very, very different from other grilled chicken. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like a typical grilled chicken that yep. we've had in other countries. Wow. Perfect way to end our day. Yeah. Yum. <laughs> So you may not know, but there are some areas, some islands particularly of the Philippines that are predominantly Muslim. Manila is kind of like the melting pot of everything here in the Philippines. So you'll find some of those uh, people from these different islands. Chewy, what, what islands exactly are we talking about? Uh, Mindanao. Most people here, the residents, came from the provinces like Maguindanao, Marawi, Lanao del Sur, Lanao del Norte, Cotabato. I feel like not a lot of people really know that uh, yeah. the Philippines will have like a strong Muslim population like that. Exactly. But this is like a great place here in Quiapo to experience their culture, their food, and we've just stumbled across one thing right here. What, what do we have here? This is called Dudul. Dudul. It's not fireworks. It's called Dudul. It's a red glutinous sticky rice okay. with coconut milk. So he's making it right on the side of the street here. He's got a big pot full of it and then uh, it's gonna be sweet. Yeah, it's a dessert. Yeah, this is amazing. I've tried this before. Okay, let's try it let's out. Go. So this is the doodle. Doodle. It kind of looks like almost like a sausage. We're trying to <laughs> unwrap it. It is really gift wrapped here. Look at that. So it's glutinous rice, sugar, coconut milk you coconut said too? Coconut milk, yeah. Oh. <laughs> what does that look like to you? <laughs> it's up to you if you want to make it hard. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. There's some crunchy pieces inside too. It's basically mochi. It is mochi. It's so sticky. <laughs> Jeez. It's like clean. Mmm. Actually, it's really good. One of my favorite desserts. Can you find this in other parts of Manila or nope. pretty much only here in the Muslim Only town? here. Wow. You can see it's cooking on charcoal right on the side of the street here. And it's got a really neat texture between chewy, but then also there's some crunchy bits, which apparently are kind of the bits that stick to the bottom of the pan, which are really good. This street has all kinds of shops lining it and they've got some really unique uh, products that I haven't really seen before. Back here, they've got 
dried fish in a bag. It looks like parrot fish. Up here, they've got the the beetle nuts, chewing beetle nuts, and then the beetle leaves as well. This is uh, this is really unique. I'd like this. This is preserved durian, almost like a durian jam. Really unique ingredients. This woman right here has a cart that's full of baby chicks and she's got ones that are colored blue and orange and tiny little, those must be quail there. It's just on a little push cart for sale. I'm the waiter here, so what, what do you want? <laughs> oh, this is like a Arabic slash Malaysian slash Indonesian karinderia. Their menu is like you're in Malaysia, you have nasi goreng, nasi kampung, you have tetari. Mm. This is one of the few authentic Malaysian karinderia in Manila. Sa drinks, dalawang hot tetari, isang parata. This is a really humble little spot. It's a Karenderia, which is like a local Filipino restaurant, but it's actually Malaysian, like Chewie was just explaining. It honestly feels like I just transported to Malaysia, so we ordered up a couple different things to try. So we've got Tay Tariq, which is very Malaysian. The whole tea, you can see super, super frothy, bubbly on the top there, thick milk tea. Oh, man, it tastes perfect. That's exactly the right taste. I don't know how to describe it, but it's got like a strong tea flavor with the creamy milk and it's not too sweet. Okay, we ordered up the paratha or roti paratha. I've got condensed milk, which is gonna be sweet. And then I guess this is sort of like a spicier sauce. Let's try this one first. Mm. It's a little plain, but uh, the sauce has a nice sweet and spicy flavor. But my favorite part is actually the condensed milk. Condensed milk, oh, you like yeah, it sweet. I like it sweet. Mm. So we've got the mee goreng, go for a squeeze of calamansi. You'll just know, this is a Malaysian or Indonesian food, but you'll just know it's a Filipino also because it has calamansi. Right, <laughs> yeah, know? right. That's the Filipino twist. Yes, I'm starting to realize how Filipino calamansi really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is everywhere here. Oh, wow. wow. Haha. -ha. That's a solid, solid mee goreng. I love it with the calamansi. It gives it such a nice fruity sourness. And that is so covered in... <laughs> The ketchup manis sauce. Mm. And spicy, huh? Mm. Yeah. Would a Filipino noodle dish be this spicy? No, yeah. definitely not. <laughs> definitely didn't think not. So. Yeah, that was pretty good. It's like a little slice of Malaysia right in the heart of the Philippines. Really cool. brought me to a really famous spot here in the Muslim town. They're serving rendang and look at this bubbling pot of chicken rendang. I can see lots of chilies in there. That smells so good. Most of the food here in Muslim town, the main ingredient is called palapa. It's like a condiment, a spice. Okay. So it's made from... Uh, this one. Oh um, yeah. Sakurab. This is sakurab. sakurab. White, white scallions. White scallions. This is the main ingredient. Oh, okay. Really interesting. I saw it all over the place here in the Muslim town. So this is the main ingredient in their rendang here. Still trying to kind of wrap my head around the fact that we're having a Malaysian and Indonesian food tour in the heart of Manila here. But rendang is one of my favorite foods in the entire world. It's just served with a yellow rice here. So let's try it out. This looks so, so good. Man, that pot is just beautiful. Anytime a restaurant hands you a plastic glove like this, it's a good sign. Except my hand's way too sweaty to get inside this thing. Oh. Okay, man, this looks so good. It's completely doused in chili, so yep. and super, super hot. So uh, this is made from coconut milk, right. burnt coconut. They have the turmeric. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's a little bit different than the rendang I've had in Indonesia before. This one's got less of a sweetness, more of a saltiness, and the coconut 
It's still kind of in its like raw form on the outside. You get a little bit of like gritty crunch on the outside. The flavor is coming from the palapa. Because the palapa, it has turmeric, it has ginger, onions, mm -hmm. and uh, white scallions. Mm -hmm. And the greatest thing, this is just 25 pesos. This is like a real filling hearty meal too. Like I mean, look, they, they pack this thing full. Man, that coconut grittiness, I love the texture of the coconut on the outside of the chicken. What a local spot. They've just got like a tarp on the side of the street, a couple of wooden benches, a couple of plastic chairs. It's sort of underneath this ramshackle building, but that does not mean they're not serving quality food. This stuff is seriously good. You can see the customers lining up to get their hands on some of this beautiful chicken rendang. Seriously, seriously good, guys. Mm. Give it a try. Cheap and delicious. Really good. I know I always say this, but I have to keep saying it. People are so friendly in the Philippines. God, Filipinos are so friendly. I mean, everybody is so welcoming. A lot of times they don't even let us pay for the food and they're just so accommodating. They love the cameras and uh, I really love their food. So if you could, please go check them out. Try out their rendang, you'll love it. Hey, look, what's up? <laughs> we have here different Baranao desserts. We have balulut, we have this biyaki. This is made from a uh, corn. Kasaba, corn in kasaba. So this is like a different munchies of Maranao. There's a lot to try in a very small area here. These shops that we've gone to are all just right beside each other. We've literally just walked down the street and gone to each restaurant along the way and this is the next one. You can see they've got a display case of all of their food. It kind of reminds me of Nasi Padang. They've got all these different dishes, but this one in particular is the one we're going for right here. So here we have it, the chicken. Pia Paran. Pia, pia Paran. Yeah, it's made okay. from turmeric, coconut yeah. milk, ginger, yeah. and this one, Malapa. Yeah, Palapa. What is this exactly? Jimmy? This is like their local Maranao chili. chili. So it has okay. the white scallions, right. the ginger, they have like uh, coconut. So this is like the local sambal. Exactly. Yeah, okay. You can use it as an ingredient, you can use it as a dip. Right, I'm gonna go for a little dip. Oh, that is meaty chicken right there. Native chicken you Native said, right? Native chicken. Grab a little bit of that. Chili sambal. Oh. oh, right away I can <laughs> taste those, those scallions, the yeah. white scallions. It's not too spicy though. Mm. Mm. That chicken is super meaty. The meat of the native chicken is much chewier mm. compared to yeah. the regular chicken. Oh man, that's actually delicious. Mm. Yeah, that's delicious. That's what I love about uh, Muslim food. It's full, full of flavors, mm. you know. They're just <laughs> revolving around your mouth. <laughs> yeah. The, the sauce. What did you say the name of the sauce is? Palapa. 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 It's really fragrant. It's got that scallion flavor, ginger. Not spicy as soon as you bite into it, but after you start chewing, mm. it starts to tingle. This is so cool to taste the food from a complete different part of the country, so far away, but we're just here in Manila, and this entire area is packed full of delicious and cheap food. We got one more stop to go. Let's go. This is the next spot here, another super local spot, just a small kind of shack on the side of the street with uh, just a few seats and what, what are they serving here, Chewy? This is called pastil, a 10 peso meal. That's 10 pesos. One of the cheapest meals in Asia. 10 pesos, that's like 18 cents, 18 cents for a meal? Yeah, it has rice, it has uh, shredded chicken, it's like adobo style. No way, that's crazy. That's probably the cheapest food in Asia. I've never seen anything that cheap for an entire meal with rice. So let's order one up, see what we can get for 18 cents. Okay, let's see what 18 cents US gets you here in the Philippines, Manila. Look at that. Well, you know what? I wasn't expecting much, but this is pretty small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said a meal, but uh, I don't know if this is totally a meal, but luckily we've already eaten tons today. So what exactly is this, Chewy? It's like adobo style, so it's shredded chicken. So compared to other meals that you have one whole piece of chicken, right. this is shredded so it can be distributed to a lot of people. Okay. Especially, in, yeah, especially in the province of Marawi. Sprinkle of chili oil, a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty tiny, but still, like, come on, what can you get for 18 cents? in America, like what? Nothing, absolutely nothing. I don't think you could buy anything for 18 cents. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that might be the best thing we've eaten today. <laughs> that is the best thing we tasted today, hands down. Damn, beautiful adobo flavor. And the shredded chicken, it really soaks up that adobo sauce. 
compared to like a big chunk of chicken. Okay, wow. 18 cents, you could come here and buy 10 of them, dollar exactly. 80 and just keep eating. That's what people do. Mm. Usually, they don't eat only one. Mm. They eat Man. like five. Before I saw a guy, it's a regular customer, he eat 10. I believe it. 10. Beautiful, beautiful flavor there. Actually, you have add-ons also. Oh, you really? can add some egg. Oh, you can get eggs and all and kinds of other stuff. Like okay. that. Mm. Just as is, amazing. It's tiny. But they didn't compromise on flavor whatsoever. Even just 18 cents. That's beautiful. If we hadn't just eaten at like four or five other restaurants, I would have had at least three or four of these. They're so good. Mm. The atti here is just like a machine. Yeah. So keep continuing, just making some more pastilles because oh. customers are coming every second. So this pastille is like the, the wrap? Like wrapped. It's, it's wrapped up, okay. Yum, awesome. Try it out. 18 cents. What can go wrong? Diarrhea. <laughs> 40 pesos for three of them because we also got chili, which is 10 pesos for the chili. Here you go, man. Thank you. That is seriously, seriously cheap. Guys, 18 cents USD? That's insane. I'm getting change back for 50 pesos for three people's meals. Thank you. Delicious. Today's food is all halal. Everything we tried was halal. And if I had to recommend just one place, it would be that. 10 peso by the steel that we just tried. Beautiful, beautiful adobo. Tasty, tasty. Oh my gosh, that was so good. So this is Ryan, the owner. Yeah. Uh, how long does it take you to cook one of the lechon? How many uh, hours uh, do you? Uh, almost uh, three and a half hours. Yeah, so usually these are being sold for like weddings or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wedding, birthday. Birthday. Yeah, other yeah, other yeah celebrations, yeah. yeah. How many years have you been selling lechon? Uh, uh, since uh, 1990. 1990? Wow, okay. But, but uh, the chicharron, crispy chicharron, we're starting in 1982. Oh, okay. So yeah. you've been selling chicharron for longer. Yeah. Okay, so you sell chicharron, lechon, uh, anything? And, and uh, we cook a pakchon, lechon, okay. and dinuguan. All right. That is our specialty. All right, I can't wait to try it out. Thanks yeah. for having us. So as Ryan was just telling me, they've been specializing in their chicharron for even longer, but this isn't the chicharron that I am used to, which is usually like the pork skin crackling fried. This is chicharron bulaklak. You can see it right here. It's really tight in here, but basically it's the pig's mesentery, which is a cut of the uh, organs. And then it's fried up super, super crispy. They've got it boiling, one pot of it boiling, and then one pot of it frying until it's super crunchy, crispy. That is the chicharron bulaklak. They call it like the flower because it sort of blooms up like a flower and also cooking right on charcoal. Super hot in here. Look at how just narrow this place is. All natural vinegar. Take a little dip, the bulaklak. A little chili in there too. I can feel it's gonna be super crunchy. Mm. Very good. It tastes really kind of fatty, oily on the inside. With the vinegar, awesome. The vinegar almost tastes like alcoholic. <laughs> I love vinegar here in the Philippines. That's so crunchy on the outside, but then really smooth, kind of oily on the inside. Yum. This Big is the intestines. intestines. Okay. Okay, so this is an, another type of, what did you call chicharron? Pitua. Pitua. So it's like the, the intestines, different cut. Again, got to go for the vinegar. Everything in the Philippines, you got to go for the vinegar. Oh, that one has like no soft bits at all. Crunchy the whole way through. Yum. That's delicious. This is salty and kind of like super crunchy, kind of melts in your mouth. And then the, the mesentery, the bulakmak, it's got like a oily kind of chewy layer on the inside. Yum. That's awesome. All right, we got to try the lechon out next. So I've been served a massive plate of the lechon. There's two main cuts. It's gonna be the meat and then the beautiful, beautiful crispy skin. My favorite cut. Oh, and look at, they're giving me even more. Oh yes, please, more skin. And the lechon's actually stuffed with lemongrass while it's being roasted. And then I've also been given this, which is a liver pate sauce used with kind of like the drippings from roasting. But let's try out a piece of this beautiful skin first. Look at the bottom of that, you can see that beautiful oily layer of fat, the best part. Oh my God. Every time 
I come back to the Philippines. I am always looking forward to that crunch. That lechon skim is just to die for. It's got that layer of fat on the bottom, which is so oily, so juicy, and then you get that seriously crunchy. Like, I can't describe how crunchy that is. You need to be careful you don't break a tooth on this stuff sometimes. It can be really, really crunchy. Okay, let's try out some of the meat, and I'm gonna go for a dip in this liver sauce, which is like vinegar, the liver, pate, and then the drippings from the, from the lechon. Mm. That sauce is sweet. Now, the meat is so tender and juicy. They really know how to roast a pig here in the Philippines. Like, damn, that's so good. Just look at the glisten of oil on that skin. It's so rich. It's got a deep red color. It's irresistible, to be honest. That pate liver sauce is really good, too. It's got sweetness. But nothing beats that crunch. It is so hot here in Manila. Chowing down on lechon for breakfast in the heat. Heavy. This is definitely one of the fattiest, oiliest lechons I've ever tried. I love it though. Oh, it's so juicy. And you can taste the smoke. Little hints of the lemongrass fragrance. It's all about that fatty, oily, rich, porky flavor though. Yeah, and the skin. Mm. I love how all these homemade vinegars in the Philippines, you'll find them in like an old Pepsi bottle or anything. In this case, it looks like an old, I don't know, Korean something, but that just means it's homemade with all those chilies in it. And that goes great too with the meat because it'll just cut right through that fatty oiliness. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that vinegar is like bordering on uh, vodka. Like I said, La Loma is known as the lechon capital of Metro Manila. I think that the capital of the Philippines when it comes to lechon's probably got to be uh, Karkar or Cebu. The lechon flavors a little bit differently here. I find the skin might even be more crispy, it might even be more oily, but there might be less of the lemongrass, less of the filling flavor. And the pigs also seem quite smaller than the ones we were seeing in Cebu and Karkar, but still really good. If you're only in Manila and you want to have the best lechon, Check out La Loma, check out Ryan Shop, super friendly people. You can order up a whole lechon if you're having a celebration or just stop by for some of the chicharron or a plate of the lechon. Oh, you won't be disappointed. Just jumped on the back of a bike, heading to our next spot here in La Loma. That's enough lechon for now. We're heading for Pares, another very famous Filipino food. If I make it there, I am barely balancing on this thing. <laughs> survived the motorcycle ride and I've come to the original Paras house, Mami's Paras house. And it kind of reminds me of like a diner, the way they've got it all red and white. And it's also kind of outdoors. So it's like half street food, half diner style, but let's go order up some Paras. Special guest appearance by Miss Foodie Mama. It's safe to say most of the time if I'm in the Philippines, she's either on camera or off camera with us. <laughs> so we're here at Mami Paras house. Pares Retiro. Retiro, okay. And uh, they're famous for their paras, which is this here, the beef stew. So this is like slow, slow cooked beef, right? Yep. And like a thick uh, sauce here, sweet sauce. And then it's served with rice. And what is that on top of the rice there? Garlic. Oh, fried garlic. Fried garlic, yeah. Okay, fried garlic rice, and then a little bit of uh, soup. beef soup, probably. Beef soup, yeah. yeah, and then this is the sauce, which is like a chili, chili with calamansi or? Garlic. Yeah, and uh, all right, this looks amazing. This is one of my favorite dishes in the Philippines, so let's dig in. Get a good piece of beef here, lots of sauce, put it on my garlic rice, a little bit of extra sauce, and then maybe some of this here, the chili with calamansi. Oh, man. That's so good, oh my God. Actually, ours might be my favorite Filipino food. It's so good. That beef just completely melted in your mouth. It's sweet sauce, but then you get that spicy chili with a little bit of sourness from the galamansi and then crunchy with the garlic. And then you take a sip of the soup. Oh, take a sip of the soup, yeah. Can't forget. Oh yeah, soup is nice and salty. That's the perfect combo. Oh yeah, yeah, that is the perfect combination. Just look at this beautiful, beautiful beef in here. 
Oh, yeah, that is perfect. It's so good. Uh, they're open 24 by 7 daily, and they've been around since uh, I think 38 years ago. 24 7. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I could eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no problem. Like after a late night party, drinking, oh, yeah. you know, you would eat this. It just goes down so easy. It's got a beautiful sweetness to it. I don't know if it's just sugar in there or it's like cane sugar or. White or brown sugar? Brown sugar, yeah. Soy sauce, yeah. there's star anise. Yeah, yeah, it's almost got like a Chinese, a little yeah. bit Chinese influence flavor with the star anise too. And then this sauce, dude, this calamansi with the chili oil, it's got a kick. I mean, Filipinos are not necessarily known for loving the spicy food, but. Oh, that's that's kind of spicy. Yeah, that's always uh, that's why it's always on the side. Yeah. Getting every last drop of this paras, and I love the sauce too. That calamansi, it's got a really strong orange flavor. Some calamansi taste more like lime, but this one's tasting more like orange. It's such a fruity, citrusy flavor. Oh man, so satisfying. It tastes so home cooked. And what an atmosphere too. This really cool kind of diner on the side of the road. I love it. Very authentic. Yum. Really delicious powder. I saw a man that hit the spot. I love that. Yeah, that's I think that's my favorite Filipino food. Oh, in the salt chicken, also very, very good in Bacolod, but that is awesome. So now we're heading for a little dessert. There's a donut shop down the street, so let's go try it out. Manila is one of those cities that just goes on and on and on. It's so expansive. I've never been to this area before today, La Loma. It's got more of a neighborhood feel, but still, you know, a little chaotic. It is just so damn hot here in Manila though. Oh my gosh. We've just arrived to Lunar's Bakery since 1988. They're famous for their donuts. So we're gonna order up some, some fresh donuts. So the donuts we're having today are called Mojaco Donuts. It's the customers who actually uh, said those names because it kind of resembles the street style or calle donuts like the like in the past. So what is Mojaco? I don't, I don't know. They just, it's just a name? I haven't had it also. Okay. It's my first time having it okay. today. Good, we really can try curious. it together. So we're in the back kitchen here. They are making the donuts fresh. These guys are super, super fast. So they've got a machine that's mixing up the dough. Once the dough's mixed up, he's kind of just breaking it into the preferred size and then rolling them around. Give it a little pinch in the middle. Simple, next they're gonna get fried. But wow, these guys are just working at lightning speed. That's a ton of donuts. Okay, we figured it out. What, why is it called Majako? So I think it's the Japanese TV series, Majako. He's round and the donuts are round and colorful. He looks like a donut. He Majako. does kind of look like the donut.
So they've got two big pots of oil out here that they're frying the donuts in. Doesn't take long, they fluff right up, golden crispy, and then they're taken inside and covered with a mixture of powdered sugar and powdered milk. So it's time to try them out, fresh, hot out of the fryer. They look so good and they are cooking so many of these donuts, it's crazy. So one more important step, after they're covered in the sugar milk mixture, they are stuffed full, injected full of filling. So they have like strawberry, matcha, ube, mango, all kinds of different flavors. They're really colorful and that's gonna add a lot of flavor. Look at how colorful and beautiful this is. We've got so many different flavors here. So there's strawberry, matcha, ube, mango. This is jackfruit. This is like a caramel. This one's chocolate and they call this one Bavarian. It's like cream. I think I gotta go for the ube because that's just so typical Filipino. I'm gonna try that first. Oh yeah. Put it all over my face. Man, that is a really good donut. Oh my gosh. It's not like crispy. It's just really, really fluffy and that ube flavor. Oh my God. That is so good, yum. Okay, next up I'm gonna try this one. It's called Yemma and it's kind of like a egg based sort of caramel. Let's try it out. That was so good. Wow. I could sit here and eat this whole box. You're gonna have to take this away from me. Filling is nice and hot still. It's creamy. You get that sugar exterior coating. Oh. Those are irresistible. I love the filling. It's so good. This one is interesting. It's jackfruit. Mm hmm. Wow. It tastes just like jackfruit. That's amazing. It's like jackfruit pudding on top of a donut. Oh my God, I have really good too. That one has a little bit of a citrusy sweetness. <laughs> I'm gonna have a sugar overload here. Okay, last one because I'm literally about to OD on sugar right here. Donut overload, this is chocolate. Another popular seller. Mm -hmm. They're just so fluffy, like the, the donut is really, really fluffy. It's not quite like a, another donut that I've had. And, Having this fresh out of the fryer is definitely the way to go. That filling just brings it all together. Adds a lot of flavor, sweetness. Mm. Sweet, soft, milky. Woo, so good and hot. So this is Lunar's Mojaco Donuts, the original spot, and the owner here is so friendly. She gave us two boxes of their famous uh, pork buns, and then not two, but five boxes of the Mochaco donuts. Oh man, and it's just started to rain out. So we're gonna head to our next spot now. Let's go. So this is our next stop. It's called Monchi's Lechon. We are not here to try their famous lechon, but instead we're here to try their charcoal grilled lechon innards. So nothing goes to waste here in Thailand. Nose to tail dining, we are eating it all. So we're gonna try some of their famous grilled intestines and uh, liver, all kinds of different cuts from the inside. But they've also got tons of lechon, which are selling like crazy. They're just shipping them out on the scooters here in the rain it never stops. So they've got the grill going. There are so many different cuts of meat and it is really popular. They've got tons of customers coming in real early. They start grilling it at 3 p.m. So you gotta get here quick if you want some. And it is seriously smoky because it's all charcoal. You can see all the different cuts. I see liver and heart and intestines. They also have a cut of the back of the neck, the lechon neck, which we ordered. 
So that's gonna be really, really good. God, it's so, so smoky. So he's using a knife to kind of slice open some of the thicker cuts, make sure it all cooks evenly. I am getting a smoke bath of lechon innards right now. He's also got a paintbrush and a bucket full of, you guessed it, vinegar that he is rubbing all of the innards and the meat with. Give it that Filipino flair. So for all the leftover lechon parts, we make it into another dish that we call lechon paksiu. So we put liver sauce to it and add vinegar to prolong its shelf life. But to be honest, it's not gonna last long because it's good with rice. This is the real deal. This is some hardcore Filipino street food. This place is crazy and it's selling out within minutes. They're almost done already and it's only been open for maybe 10 minutes. They've sold tons of this stuff. And they're just grilling away. Filipinos know how to work our grill. These guys are masters. Okay, we've got our bag of grilled meats. Look at the size of this bag. I think we ordered up six different cuts. This one is the heart, we believe. I've got a bag of full of vinegar. How should I do this? So you take a bite and then you sip from the... Drink the vinegar? All right. God. That is really good. Super smoky and they've got like a sweet marinade on it too. Actually that has no like innards taste at all. I'm actually a big fan of heart. If any of the intestines or innards, intestines, liver, anything, I go for the heart. Oh man, this is really good actually. I can see why all the locals are lined up. With that vinegar, there's got to be garlic in there. Man, actually really, really good. All right, it's like a mystery bag. You don't know what you're gonna get. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> look at this. Oh. <laughs> look at that. All right, we've got the small intestine. You want first? Huh? Go ahead. I'll take a bite first. <laughs> that is a massive intestine. Wow. <laughs> mm, can you take that? Hold it. <laughs> A little vinegar. <laughs> mm. That one's chewy. A little bit bitter? Yeah, some creaminess in there, which is a little bit concerning. I could drink this whole thing of vinegar, seriously. Whatever they marinated in kind of caramelizes up once it's been grilled, and you can see sliced into this. This is the, the back of the Madalina. neck. Let's try that. Mm. Oh my god. It's delicious. <laughs> Just sucking the vinegar out of the bag. Actually, this is so, so good. That sauce that they've got it marinating in is phenomenal. A little bit sweet. Just so you guys know, I'm not uh, I'm not weird sucking the vinegar out of the bag. This is a real Filipino doing it right here. It's so refreshing. This is the way to do it. <laughs> you guys just drink this like water here? Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay, <laughs> this is the liver. Holy Woo. crap, that's a huge liver. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the thickness of that piece of liver. Oh my lord, that looks so juicy too. I'm usually not a big fan of the liver. Try it though. Like I said, everything tastes good with vinegar. <laughs> I think I gotta go for the heart, give it up for the heart, and give it up for the, the back of the neck. This is a little gamey. So the streets of Pateros are just lined with these stalls selling all kinds of balut. So there's different varieties, and then they also have these pink ones, which are salted egg. You can see one open right there and they look like just a normal egg but uh, once you open it up you'll find out that it's not uh, your typical egg. So balut has different kinds. Um, there's this penoy higop which is a very soupy one. It's like an egg custard. Then we have the penoy tuyo which is the dry one. This is the balut saputi which is already the 18 days. The best balut that you can get. 18 days. 
18 days, that's the perfect time that you crack it open and eat it. So before we actually dig into the balut, we're going to see how they're made and we're gonna have to take uh, one of these little trikes to the spot, very Filipino, let's go. Somehow on this little trike, it's got a side cart. We've got one, two, three, four, five of us. <laughs> Just a quick trike ride and we've come to the supplier of Balut here in Pateros, or one of them. So they've got an incubator inside. We're gonna see sort of how they are made. So I'm here with Tare, the Balut queen of Pateros. <laughs> and uh, can you explain to me a little bit like the process? So step one, it must be fresh. Fresh, fresh duck's egg. This is the raw duck's egg, fresh from the farm. Almost like a big closet full of them. And there's almost like maybe 15 of these in here. It is a little bit warm in there. So they sit in here for 17 days, just kind of incubating on these drying racks here. Turn the egg so that I know, it will grow in perfectly. Evenly, okay. Even. Like an x-ray. Uh, yeah, it looks like an x-ray. So the trays are taken from the closets here and then put on top of this and this is kind of like the x-ray station. So you can see that they light right up and then some of them you can see are more translucent than others. So this is kind of just to check which have been fertilized, which ones will be actually balut in the end. But then the other eggs are still used, uh, they're still eaten. You really need to check these. So they have a second area to, to check them. Fertilized balut, this one. Oh, so you can't, oh, Take okay. a look the embryo inside. The, All right, you can see yeah. the embryo. embryo yeah. yeah. Balut. Ready to sell. Ready to sell, yeah. yeah. 17 days. Okay. Old. This one, very nice. Ay, oh. <laughs> This one, this is not good. So just for a further inspection, they have this little light box here. You put it right up to the side and you can see this one, not balut. It's, uh, it's too translucent, but then this one, you can see that the light is not shining through. That is gonna be the balut. So there is a, a duck embryo in there. Inspection x-ray to make sure your balut is growing properly before they can be taken to the shop and sold. So these ones are around 17 days. They're perfect, ready to go. And uh, well, I guess now the only thing left to do is try one out. So we've come to Tere's store. She's got all the balut here. She was just telling me that about 28 days until it actually hatches into a duck. It needs to maintain the temperature around 38 degrees, but Manila is around 38 degrees. So if these sit here too long, uh, she might have some ducks running around the shop. This is seriously one of the Philippines' most famous foods, right? Yeah, street food. Typical street food. So we've got a bucket full of them here. So this is the 17, eight, uh, 17 days old. It's very hot. They're very hot. So how do you cook them? Boil? Boil. Boil them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very hot. Oh how God. many minutes? Book? More than one hour. More than one hour. Oh, you hour. boil them That's for one it's hour. Very hot. So we have to crack it open. Yeah. On, on this the top. side. Yes. Okay. So just. <laughs> it's not too solid. Okay. And then just All peel right. back. Peel it off. Yeah. Yep. You can see right away that it's embryo inside. Oh, that's the soup? <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's so delicious. that's good stuff too? We have yeah. have to put salt first. Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, you show me, Kit. So just like Shaolong Bao, right? You open Shaolong <laughs> Bao, soup dumplings. You open things and then you put oh, something. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's very, very juicy. There's a little film on the top, but I can already see the embryo going on in there, but we're gonna shoot this back, I guess. <laughs> no, seriously, it is. It tastes like a duck stock. Very good. Yum. Okay. Very rich. I'm, now I'm just worried about the texture. I don't know. I know now I know about the taste, but I don't know about the texture. So that's going to be my next thing I got to overcome here. So just keep peeling it off. Okay, look at that, guys. You can see the. I don't even know what's going on there. Something. That's the white part. That's the white part and the yellow part. That's all we can identi identify. The egg yolk. Okay. Is there even an egg yolk? Oh, oh. 
Karina was just telling me this is the, the perfect balut. Why is this one perfect? It's perfect balut because it's coated by... Do you see the white one? It's the coated white? by this white yeah. part? Yeah. You okay. cannot see the hair. You cannot see the hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little bit of salt. And then vinegar. Vinegar too? Yeah. Okay. A little bit vinegar. How do I bite this? Yeah, you just bite it. Yeah. Okay. Vinegar. Oh. Okay. Wouldn't be the Philippines if there was no vinegar. The whole thing? Yeah. All right, my first balut. Tastes good. Mm. Mm hmm. Such a strange texture. It's really hard. If you're a balut expert, if you know that it's already hard, you don't eat the stone. I that's, ate the the white, stone. that's the white part. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> You have to experience that. <laughs> it's like half creamy, half crunchy. Whoa. This is something I could see myself eating like 2 a.m. after a long night of drinking. It's like 10 a.m. right now, so it is what it is. It's the texture that uh, takes a little getting used to. That's just like a protein bomb. There's a lot of protein in that. So we're gonna try another one. What's this one called? Pan Penoy. Penoy, all right. Yeah. Okay. Unfertilized oh, uh, egg. Unfertilized egg, yeah. The, this one, Higupen. When we were just at the shop, we saw the ones that were really translucent. This is that one. And Ki and Tere just keep explaining as the wet one, which doesn't make it sound very appetizing, to be <laughs> honest. Ow! Yeah, so these hot. are really, really hot. This is the wet one. So unfertilized. This looks more like a <laughs> what I'm used to eating. This looks like an onsen egg or something. Yeah, yeah, that's Just it. Just slurp it back. All right, you can see, look at how juicy it is. It looks like an onsen egg. Oh, I'm losing some of it. Okay, let's try. You can show the inside. Yeah, that's the wet one. It's like a runny, runny onsen egg. But I've gotten down to a part where there's some actually cooked egg. So I gotta peel away the shell a little bit. This is a messy job here, eating balut. Go for some. Shower of vinegar, plenty of vinegar. Oh, that's creamy. I actually think I prefer the balut more than this one. I guess I'm having one more. Honestly, the soup. Mm. That's the best part for sure. Key. What is that? Black part right there. It's part. What? <laughs> what is this? It looks like feathers. Yeah, that's the Is that feathers? Yes. So there's there's actually feathers developing yeah, in this the, one. Yeah, that's the best oh one to my show the camera. God, really developed. Maybe too much, or is that still edible? Look at this. Those are feathers. That is like almost a baby duck. Are you gonna help me eat this one? You can do it. No, no, here, split. You can have the feathers. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. I'll have this half. Here, I'll give you some of my vinegar. Uncovered some feathers, maybe a little bit of beak in there. Here. I'm saying be good to me. <laughs> Alright, he's having the feathers. Mm. Super soft. Oh, look, you Before got a little... I finish this one, let's slurp it. Key is a true Filipino. I've got a long way to go before I'm anywhere close to that. You get like a crunchy, like maybe the start of a bone or the start of a beak or maybe an eye socket. <coughs> a little feather in my throat. <laughs> Tore's shop is super popular. I mean, there's people coming and going. Some people are literally bringing their own carton to fill up with a dozen balut. This is seriously a Filipino delicacy. They love it. They're eating it up like crazy. Tore. That's the best balut I've ever had. Really? Oh, Thank nice you so much. meeting you. Bye -bye. So apparently, you don't just eat balut boil, but they also cook it into some Filipino dishes. We're getting in a trike again. This time, again, five people, but uh, we've, got a, we've got a child on board there. I don't know if you can see. So we're gonna have uh, balut cooked in many ways. Adobo, sizzling, crispy, and spicy. You can see a list of all the different dishes they're making with balut. So adobo, crispy, spicy, sizzling, sweet and sour. Yeah, they have it all. So if I haven't mentioned yet, uh, pateros is called uh, pateros because people here are raising ducks, which are generally called pato. This is crazy. I, I, I didn't realize that you could eat balut in these styles. So starting over here, we've got the crispy and it's the entire 
thick, the entire balut in there. I was literally just told you're only supposed to have maximum two balut per day. And I've already had my quota, so we're just per gonna week. go per, per week, <laughs> per week. So I've had my weekly <laughs> balut quota. Honestly, this is so much better <laughs> than the regular balut. Super crispy, I love that vinegar. A bit of spice in there, I could eat that. That is perfect drinking food. Balut adobo, most famous Filipino street food and most famous Filipino food. That's safe to say, right Keith? Yeah. We're not making this stuff up here, folks. This is real feathers. This thing was about to fly. It's like a really thick, sweet sauce. With a crispy garlic. Yeah, crispy garlic. So good. This makes it so much more appetizing. Up next, sweet and sour. This one's also deep fried. I'll try to cut that in half. Can't believe this is just like boiled eggs. I've never even thought to have boiled eggs sweet and sour. Honestly, a really good idea, but why not just have semi-fertilized duck boiled eggs with sweet and sour? There's so many random things inside that I'm not aware of. Like, Key, what the <laughs> hell is that? Mm. Mm. That's great. This is perfect with rice. Yeah, you could cover anything in that sauce and it would taste good. And we've got the, the spicy, covered in spicy sauce, deep fried again. I'm sorry to my Filipino viewers and I'm sorry, Key, <laughs> and all you balut lovers, but there's nothing appetizing about breaking into that and seeing a bunch of black Feathers. I've got like 95% <laughs> fried coating and then a little bit of yolk. Mm. Tastes like the sweet and sour sauce too. A little spicy. A lot better with the chili. Mm. Like actual chili. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a chili. This is my first time eating balut. You mean you didn't try the, the original flavor earlier? No, I didn't try. So you're just Sorry, gonna go straight for the sweet and sour, huh? So how many balut that you had today? I don't know. I don't know anymore. So we many hairs. Count. <laughs> so which part did you have to eat? Not that's the, the fun part about the balut. You don't know. Oh, that's so hard. Alright. I can taste a little bit like egg yolk with the hair. So. <laughs> that's all I taste. <laughs> All right, balut dish number five. This is quite the presentation when they brought it out. This one is the balut sizzling. So brought it out on the sizzling hot plate. You just get like all kinds of strange colors and textures and patterns in there. I'm gonna go for this piece, some veggies. Mm, hot. Oh, I got some feathers there too. It's something you gotta try in the Philippines. This is like a very quintessential Filipino street food. Yeah. And this place, Dos Hermanas, has all kinds of interesting ways to try it. So if you're not brave enough for the original, maybe come here and try it, some of their unique flavors. This is um, the dessert, it's called inutak. So inutak comes from the word utak, which means brains, because it resembles the, oh, yeah? the brain. But it's actually just... It's glutinous rice cake right, yeah. with coconut. Okay. And you should be able to eat it with um, ice cream. Specialty dishes in Patel. Oh, okay. So yeah. let's try this with the ice cream. In. So I'll go for a little, I'm gonna go for a spoonful and then a spoonful of the inutak, which you can see is like toasted on top here, or baked with a nice crispy layer. Should be very gooey and stuff. Yeah, very gooey. So that's the glutinous rice. Finally something I want to eat. Mmm. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Mm. It's like hot mochi. Really gooey. It coats your mouth completely. Wow. It's sticky. Yeah, it's still hot. That's so good. Mmm. Mm. He is going to be taking the other 16 balut that we have 
back home to her family just so you know we're not wasting it. We got a whole tub of ice cream here. When it's still warm. Yeah. Mm. That's damn good. Thank you so much. Hey. See you next time. Hey. Delicious food here at Dos Hermanas. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Wow, so friendly. The people here in the Philippines are just some of the friendliest in the world. This is also called Paris Usok. In English, it means Paris smoke because they're using wood fire, which is very seldom here in Manila. Uh, wood fire is being used in provinces like that, the old school way, but here they're using they're using it. So, so smoked Paris. Yeah, smoky Paris, All like right. Paris Usok. And I see that they've got like a bone, like bone marrow too. Yeah, they have bone marrow. Like this is like an innovation because Filipino love. Uh, food that will make your cholesterol high. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. This is a really, really local spot. It's just set up right on the sidewalk here, all open and outdoor seating. There's tons of people working here. Jim's been, it's been around for a long time, like Chewie was just saying. And uh, they have tons of customers, even though we're here at their off hour. So Paras is like a slow cooked beef. But then here, like Chewie was just saying, it's smoked beef and then it's served just with rice, very typical Filipino food. So let's order one up, try it out. This place is really, really cool, super local. We're kind of standing in like a shed. Yep. <laughs> this is 24 hours. 24 hours. So Paris is the food for every time. I mean, breakfast, lunch, dinner, midnight snack. After you get uh, drunk, yeah. you eat this. Or early in the morning, anytime yeah. you want. And this is not like the Paris that I've seen before. This one's really soupy. It's like thin broth, right? And uh, the ones I've seen before have been a lot thicker, but I can see tons of smoked beef, right? Smoked beef. And then we're gonna transfer that right onto the rice. Oh man. I can smell it already. Cheers, Cheers man. Oh yeah. Oh wow. It's so beefy. Nice. Yeah. It's like concentrated beef flavor. Mm. Oh man. Really tender too. It's a different attack. Mm hmm. And uh, compared to the original traditional Paris, yeah, because this one's like the Bulalo style, very like also smoky mm -hmm. because of the firewood. And it tastes a little bit like cleaner, a little <laughs> bit lighter flavor than mm. some of the other Paris. It's really <laughs> thick. And let's go for one more bite. Yep, so this is like my personal choice. I put some calamansi, okay, to add some citrus. Lots of calamansi here in yeah. the Philippines. I love it. So delicious. Adds a citrusy, orangey flavor. And then what do you got there? A bunch of Wait. chili. And then I got some chilies here. Oh man, that is looking spicy. Look at this bowl of chili. Fresh chilies, huh? Let's try that with a little bit of the calamansi. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Classic. Yep. Man, I love the flavor of that calamansi. It's like orangey, citrusy. It gives a little sourness. That's why a lot of uh, people or Filipinos come here. You can just drench the, the rice with that soup. That's one of my favorite things in the world. It's kind of like a soupy rice with all that flavor in the rice. Oh my God, it's good. Man. That is a solid bowl of Paris. Yep. And what a cool place too. 24 hours, come and get your Paris fix any time of day. It's unlimited soup. Unlimited soup? Yeah, so for example. Free refill. Yeah, free refill. Oh, right on. This is always one of my favorite Filipino foods. It's just so classic, simple, home cooked, but it's just full of flavor. The beef is so tender at this spot, Jim's amazing. Oh man, with the chili, <laughs> yum. So we're just going on an all out food tour today. Where are we going next, Joey? So what? after the soupy, savory broth, let's have some dessert. Okay. It's a surprise, all it's right. a mini surprise. <laughs> let's go, I'm excited. Let's go. All right, Joey, where have you brought me? We are here in the historical, legendary Mang Toots Banana Rama. All right, so we're gonna see how they're making their famous banana rama. We're gonna meet the man behind the name. We're gonna try it out. I've heard a lot, so this is let's, a nice surprise, man. Let's eat some mini to run. All right, let's, let's go. go. It's 11 years already, maybe 13 years. 13 years. Uh, for this, uh, how, how many years it's been working with it? I see. Yeah, more yeah. channel. Yeah. Uh, he, he started here in the USA and then he... This is Taiwanese very, you know, 
So I'm with Mang Toots here and we're going to try his famous banana rama. And uh, we just saw how they're made. It's it's kind of like a spring roll or a lumpia. So it's first a couple pieces of banana wrapped up in a wrapper. And now we're just making the sauce. And you were saying there's all kinds of different ingredients in here. Yeah. Jackfruit, banana essence. But banana the, flavor, yeah. cinnamon, sugar, pineapple juice. But the key or one of the main ingredients too is, is the rum, right? Rum, yeah. Yeah, and I can smell it. So we're caramelizing the sauce now and then we're going to toss in, in the banana rama into this, right? Yes. And get that coated. So it will be like a heavy caramel. Very so that uh, it will be uh, heavy coated in the banana to get all so that flavor on, yeah. on there. And this smells so good, guys. I can smell the cinnamon, you can smell the banana, you get a little bit of that rum essence in there. Man, that smells good. I can't wait to try this out. Really unique. And you've been selling this for how many years? Wow, it's almost uh, 13 years. 13 years. Yes. And he's selling like 10,000 a day. Yes. Crazy. So these are super popular. Thank you, you know, for having us. Before the before pandemic, I sold out maybe 14,000 a day. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just make the half of these. Yeah, you can see they're all individual, almost like little spring rolls there. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful caramelizing sauce. Oh my gosh. That looks so good. It smells incredible. Yeah. Look we at sell this. it until we start uh, cooking uh, nine oh, 8 o'clock in the morning until uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. And what is this? This is the uh, concoction of rum, banana, banana essence to make it uh, smell good and banana oh, yeah. flavor. That smells so good. To, to make it rum. sticky. Yeah. To make it sticky. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can see it's starting to coat completely. Yes. And then we will put some sesame seeds. Sesame seeds are really nice. That looks so, so good. Oh my okay. Gosh. Look at how gooey and delicious oh. those are looking. Completely coated in that. Beautiful, yes. beautiful sauce. Oh my gosh. Is it better to eat them when they're hot like this or should you wait for them to cool down? Uh, I or? think it's cooled this down already, now, yeah. but I have some spoon. And where is the... Uh, so friendly. This is the, composed of cinnamon, white sugar, and uh, milk boy, or we, we call it skim milk. Oh, like powdered milk. Yeah. Okay. But this one, we like this. when when there's a lot of orders, we separate this one because, you know, it makes soft when it takes uh, when we put this one already. Oh, okay, so you can't you gotta add change it last. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. got you. It's time to try. Yes. Let's try together. Yeah. This uh, this is like a freshman food because I'm from the University of Santa Rosa, the University in France. So if you're a freshman, it's like it's a must try. It's yeah. mandatory to eat yeah. the banana ram of mango. During your degree, yeah. how many of these do you think you ate? I don't know. I think my DNA has a lot of banana ram. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe right. hundreds. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, cheers. 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 Oh. We try together. My first cheers. time. Cheers. cheers. Thank you. Mm. Oh my god. Oh yeah. The banana. Perfectly ripe on the inside. It's almost got a little bit of a sourness in the banana on the inside, but then that exterior is sweet, gooey. You taste yeah. the essence of the rum. Mm. That is phenomenal. Oh my god. And it's like very uncommon to see a uh, toron that is usually this size. Because yeah. usually toron is a big size. Mm -hmm. so this is a bite size. These are perfect little one perfect. bite. Yeah. Explosion mm. of flavors in your mouth. Oh my god, guys. Wow. Mm. Another, please. Yeah. <laughs> the little bits of sesame on the outside add a, just a hint of sesame flavor and then you get that sweet cinnamon on the outside. Gosh. Oh my god. It's so so good. This will be a hit in Canada. Seriously. Really Canadians is. would love this. So we've just arrived to our next spot. We're just jumping around spot to spot. It's just gonna be eating all day today, strictly eating. It's pouring rain right now, but we're gonna have a really famous soup, which is perfect for a rainy day like today. So they've got two bubbling pots of soup. What kind of soup are they serving here? It's called bulalo. 
Bulalo. It's a huge beef bone soup. Beef and bone. we love this, especially in a rainy day, so cold, like mm -hmm. December month. Yeah, I can smell that they're cooking it on charcoal. Yep. Which I love here in the Philippines. They're doing it even in like a nice kind of modern-ish place like this. They're still doing it in a traditional way using the charcoal like that. And look, this place is a neighborhood. So Laon Laan is like an area or neighborhood in Manila. So this is uh, very local. Right. Uh, a lot of people from their house go here just to take out some bulalo. Okay, I can't wait to try this. I've never tried bulalo, but I can see these bubbling pots. I can see big chunks of beef in there. So let's order one up. It's let's gonna go. be perfect for this rainy weather. Tara. That is just an absolute monster chunk of beef snipping up into manageable pieces. And the broth, I can see green chilies, garlic, I can see some black peppercorns floating around in there, bubbling around. Oh, that looks so, so good. So they've also got a grill here. And one of their specialties is their stuff squid so it's stuffed with celery onions all kinds of different herbs and stuff and he's cooking on charcoal the huge flame getting that nice and charred on the outside so we're sat down with our two dishes here what's the name of this restaurant this is bulaloan salaunlaan okay. bulaloan salaunlaan so we've Thank got uh, some more things coming some condiments but the famous dish here is the bulolo. Yep. And this is the slow cooked beef with, look at that. That is all bone marrow in the middle. I can't believe you're not going for that first. Okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I gotta go in for that first. Because they, this will block our artery. So I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Just go for a small piece at least. Mix it with some of that beef. Oh, this is so packed. It's overflowing. There's so much going on in there. is a phenomenal soup. It's so perfectly like balanced. It's really fatty with that bone marrow, of course, but the broth is clean and it's it's simple, so it kind of just like cuts through it, mixes with the beef perfectly. Oh my god. Actually, bro, the mo one of the most defining fish of bolalo, it's a soup. If the soup is good, that's a good sign. This is because a good we soup. Filipinos, we like we love some rice. Right. So sometimes what we do, we oh, just yeah. put some soup on the rice. On the rice, no meat, and then we'll just eat. And then after we finish one rice, we'll get another rice. That's the time we'll eat the meat. Oh, yeah. We're being resourceful. I can do that all day yeah. too. I love the soup with the rice. Oh, it reminds me a little bit of Kamsi, which mm. I tried in Bacala. Similar, but this one's got a different, more beefy, cleaner t flavor. Actually, you're right. Kamsi is a bulalo, but it is like a more sour. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. got that ajiote uh, taste in it, a little bit sour. Oh my god, though, guys, I love Filipino soups. From Sinigang to Bulalo, Kansi, they're all pretty much my favorite Filipino foods of them all. Oh my god, I love it. There are different kinds of bulalos in uh, in the Philippines. In each province, they have their own version of bulalo. Mm. So this one, this is like a Metro Manila style kind of bulalo. Yeah. Oh, this is such a good version. So I'm stealing all of the the bone marrow for myself. Sorry, Chewy. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I can have it every day. <laughs> oh my god. It just completely liquefies in your mouth. What do you got going on here? I'm making you a little sauce. Yeah, sauce. So this is fish sauce. Fish sauce. Chili okay. and calamansi. And that's for the beef. Yep. Okay. Fish sauce, calamansi. Let's grab a piece of beef. Yep. Oh, you can dip it or There's you can put so it in your much rice. Beef. So it depends on you. I just go straight. Mm -hmm. A little saltiness, sourness, spicy. Oh my god. Seriously. Filipino soups go hard. <laughs> They're so good. Man, that is awesome. Okay, we're gonna try the squid next. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> the squid is just absolutely packed full of stuff. Look at that. Tons of stuff in there. Celery, you have onions, uh, onion leaves, and tomatoes. Okay, I'll just kind of take a cross section here. I'm gonna lose a lot of filling there, but <laughs> take it back. Oh, it's stuck. It's like squid on steroids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a crazy squid. Oh man, you're not gonna one bite that, are you? 
It depends on your mouth. It depends how big on your mouth it but I think I can do it. I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> just be a challenge. I don't think it's gonna work. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm, whoa. There's a lot of fresh veggies going on in there. That actually might be like the most vegetables I've ever seen in a Filipino food before. Mm. You guys are like the meat, fried, rice, eggs. I don't see a whole ton of dishes with fresh veggies like that. I'm not a huge squid lover, but that's dominated by the flavor of the fresh celery in there. I can taste the onions, there's peppers all kinds of things, cilantro. Actually, that's really, really good too. I've never even seen that dish before today. I'm not a huge squid lover, but that was really good. What's this here? Uh, it's an extra barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce, okay, yeah. Go for a snip. Mm. It's super smoky. That was probably the least flattering <laughs> one bite I've ever done on camera. <laughs> I love the squid, but man, this bulalo, so, so good. The beef here is just effortless. Chewing, super tender, and the soup says amazing flavor. Mm. You can only get that flavor cooking it with charcoal like that. It's low cooked. Oh my god! You start like early morning, uh, yeah. boiling that the beef takes so forever. It would be tender. Oh, so good! I love how there's some really like fatty chunks like that. <laughs> and we got some veggies because under this, here too. That's eh? the chest. That's the chest meat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes. Uh, most bulalo use the knee. The knee. So this one is had a more lipid, a fatty part. Ah, okay. And there's a little bit of lettuce down there. You know, to get your conscience up, right? Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, eat some veggies. 5% lettuce. Yep. 95% fat. Oh. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's seriously good. Good. Bulalo. Try it in the Philippines next time. I can't believe I've never tried it up until this point. So we're finished off with the Bulalo. We've come to another area of Manila. This is called Ugbo, Ugbo? Ugbo Night Market, but we're here early. It's still opening up, but we've come to, what is this spot? This is the Mangrados Lechon since 1994. Lechon. So before all of this street food scene here in Tondo, this is the original like uh, street food legend since 1994. So this since 1994. Yeah. Same year as me. <laughs> yeah, my birthday, yeah. 29 years. So it's down this tiny, tiny little alley. Let's go. Look at this. Whew. Let's go. What is lechon called Wally? So this is a different kind of lechon. The usual lechon that you can see in the internet is a whole roasted pig. But this one is like the belly and deep fried. Deep fried. So Super this, crispy. We, we call it lechon kawale because kawale in English is like the pan. Uh, like the wok. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's being lechon in the wok. Deep fried lechon belly. Take a huge slabs of it right here. This one's already finished cooking. These are the uncooked ones and then she just dropped another slab in there. Look at it boiling away. Oh my gosh. This restaurant is so narrow. It's just taking up this entire alley. They're frying the lechon there. They've got a little station here where they're cooking the soup and then you can see all of the customers lined up along the side here. Really tight quarters. We're gonna try to find a seat and order up the lechon koali and then also their famous soup too. Has arrived. We are sat down. We've got all kinds of different things. I think they brought us pretty much one of everything. Best of Tondo. So this is their famous dish, though, the lechon kuali. It's the same thing as Cantonese shuyok. So it's got that super crispy fried pork skin on the outside, fatty pork belly on the inside. And then what is the soup here, Chewy? 
This is the mong soup or large intestine soup. Large intestine yep. soup. So there's yeah some lechon intestines in there. Oh yeah, wow, you can see it. And then some garlic, some scallions in there. And then we've also got a plate of all kinds of different cuts, braised things. What do we got in here? Uh, but ovaries, we have tong, ovaries, tongue. tongue. Yeah. Wow, so like everything Intestine. else. Yeah. Everything else. <laughs> oh man. All right, we've got a feast here in the alleyway at uh, Mangrado. Mangrado. Okay, let's dig in. Okay, going for the lechon quali. We got a sauce here. What is a sauce? It's so like a sweet, sweet sauce. sticky sauce. Oh, you're completely drenching it, huh? Yeah, Okay. that's the style. Okay, a, little bit, uh, a little bit of uh, shredded papaya. Shredded papaya, oh, really cool, okay. Oh yeah, we've also got fried, uh, fried rice, garlic fried rice here. Cheers. Cheers. Seriously mm. 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 crunchy. Fatty, very fatty. That sauce is nice and sweet. Garlic from the garlic rice. Yeah. That's super crunchy, man. It's the ultimate tondo comfort food. Yeah. I mean, if you're visiting tondo, even the even my like my uncles and aunties go here because this is like a, this is a heritage food. Yeah. 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 And look at this. They also gave us an extra piece of just the skin. <laughs> here, let me share this with you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You hear that? Oh my god. That is so crunchy, man. Wow. A little salty, too. That's why they call it so called it the tonic. Because it's like oh, yeah. the crispy yeah. outside and juicy and tender inside. But like you can see, this is all bubbled up. It's not really like the mm. smooth lechon skin. And this goes well with this sauce because it is quite salty, actually. A little shredded papaya, too. <laughs> That crunch level, 9,000. Oh man, you can break a tooth. I just love also the garlic rice. Mm. It's a well balanced meal. Mm -hmm. Large intestine soup. What's the name of the, the local name of this? Tumbong. 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 Okay, not a huge fan of the large intestine. You know, that is the last exit point of the, uh, <laughs> you know what. Before it became, mm. <laughs> Let's try it though. Mm. Wow. I thought it was gonna be chewy, mm. but you're chewy. I'm chewy. That's not chewy. That's not chewy. <laughs> it's tender. <laughs> it's very tender. Actually, it doesn't have a funk either. Yep. Because most of the intestine soup or intestine dish, there's like a pungent flavor yeah. or aroma. Yeah. But and Mangrado uh, takes skills. He said that he's very proud that he cleaned it well, so it doesn't have a, like a foul taste no, or smell. No, there's no smell yeah. at all. It's it's like really just the flavor of that soup, which is again a little bit salty. A little bit of uh, garlic flavor in there as well. And mm. full of onion uh, leaves. Yeah, actually, it's not bad at all. Or you can uh, put the, the intestine yeah. and then get some little Dip bit in of the sauce. Yep. What is this? Just a little bit of uh, soy sauce. Soy sauce. And calamansi. Yeah, it's got to be eaten with this garlic fried rice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the large intestines. Or the small intestines for that matter, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. There's no weird flavor. It just tastes like the soup. Okay, so this is the ears, the ovary, and mm. the tongue. Okay, what are you going for? Uh, just go with some tongue. I'm gonna go for whatever okay, okay. the hell this is right here. Okay. <laughs> I think that's the bahiguya. I know, that's a tongue also. That's a tongue. Tongue? Oh, yeah. I love tongue. <laughs> oh. That's super sweet. Oh, it's got a nice braise on the outside. Mm. Mm, that tastes so almost, Chinese style. Yeah, it tastes Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say like Taiwanese braised uh, mm. organs. Mm. That's uh, really nice, actually. Not like the lechon, which is very salty. That's nice and sweet. Mm. Yeah. Back alley lechon, yum. Some really good lechon quality. A little bit greasy, a little bit salty, but cool atmosphere down this tiny little alley. Might be a little intimidating for a first timer, but everyone was really friendly there. Filipino people are friendly, period. Every Filipino person I know is extremely friendly. Finishing off the day with something sweet. It wouldn't be a complete Filipino food tour without Halo Halo, so we're ordering one up from this place called Aling's. Consuelo's original halo halo. They've been around since 1960, so let's try it.
So Halo Halo is just the mixed ice, all kinds of different ingredients they put in there, but one of the coolest things they're doing is they're using like a hand shaved ice, all manual, and it's a really hidden spot. You gotta go through the narrow front of the shop to get into what honestly looks like just their house. I think this is just their home. <laughs> Look at the table, it's like my dining table at home. Let's sit down and eat. Chewy, how many of these ingredients can you identify in this uh, Halo Halo? Maybe, I'll just take a guess, like around 10. 10 ingredients. Yeah. There's beans, yeah. there's uh, banana, ice cream, jellies, and you know, there's a proper way of mixing Halo Halo. Oh, am I doing it wrong? I'm starting no, to- No, it's okay, it's okay. Just a, a quick tip. Yeah. So, your spoon, the end of your spoon, will go to the- To the bottom deepest point, point, yeah. The bottom part, and then slowly. Okay, you'll work just, your way up from yeah, the bottom. Work your way up. It's also a big chunk of- a flan there too. Yeah. I think I lost mine. This is a kind of unique because usually in Halo Halo in the Philippines, they're just using like one quart of flan. Oh. This is like a whole yeah. hockey puck. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> wow, I love the Canadian reference. It is like a hockey puck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man, let's give it a try. Okay. There's ice cream, ice, ube. milk, ube, ube. ube, everything. Oh man. Okay, Tons cheers. of ingredients. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh, eh? Oh, it's not like super, super sweet. Mm. I taste that flam, milk, get the crunch from the ice, get a piece of this ice cream here. The first time I tried this, uh, there's a lot of variations of halo-halo, but this one, I love the milk. Mm. There's a, like a sweet, milky yeah. texture, and it's creamy. like a, thick, a creamy, yeah. exactly. And I feel like I'm just sitting at like my grandmother's house or mm. something, right? <laughs> I'll finish up, go upstairs and sleep. Yeah, after this, I'll go take a nap upstairs. They've been around since 1960. Can you believe that? Yep. Serving Halo Halo for, what? 70, uh, 60 something uh, years. Oh, we're bad in math, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> we're bad at math, good at eating. Mm. Mm. No, that's really good Halo Halo. Bigger that he is rubbing all of the innards, the meat with.